I just need a break. I need to give this song a break, I think. It's, close to me it's not bad. Midnight. Just heard it a Some trillion times. A one, two, three, okay, you know what? I want... I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose. So I will not allow the fates to decide. I'm gonna uh, make a big boy so choice. Really Let's see. Let's see. Mine. How about... Come on and get your kicks, cause I got your money with a face like that. Do you? I don't know. How about this one? This one's always fun. No, oh, you gosh, don't darn it. need a money with a face like that. Do you? From 
I just imagine the storming earlier would have. Yeah. Well, I just thought that was gonna keep everybody away. I'm. I'm just. I'm more hopeful that um, Warm Pigs gets uh, gets a crown. Who's uh? So Emma's out of town though. Right? Yeah. yeah. So Cameron's gonna be hosting. That's cool. Is are you gonna be here? Um. I don't, well, he's not going to be participating. I don't know if he's going to come by. He's had a, a root canal. Oh, shit. That's a, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's good. It's good to get done. But that's a root canal. Do you need a, a test us? Well, <laughs> I should probably say work then, huh? Like as I would usually during the show at a normal tone. My good, 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 my good. Yeah, I usually project a bit. Yeah. And am I good? I mean, the money maker. Why? That seems like too much. How many episodes are waiting to get put up on the internet for in the past few months, Jesse? Yeah. Now it's like the last one that went up, as I think the holiday one, right? Yeah, I think so. So. That's good. It makes it seem like Stab ended with yeah. that episode. <laughs> I've probably got a dozen, oh, wow. but I think that's something I can do at work. So I'm going to get the audio, and then yeah. I'm just going to listen to it Don't you have like a, a new gig right now? Yeah. That's good. That's why we're three months behind. Okay. I so. think being a little late on the podcast is good. Like, I disagree. O- only because... I worked so hard to get caught up. O- only because then it's like staggered, so it's like but it's not, not the episode staggered. everyone be a heard on the now. Friday just... night. Mm-hmm. No. Because no. there's something about something being new, being the one you go for. Like it's, if, What I'm saying is like if you listen to the show on Friday and then... You're like, well, I could go listen to an old episode, but you I don't have it in my mind. You vastly overestimate the uh, audience of oh, this I program. Oh, I always do. I wish uh, we had the audience that you think we do. 
how has uh, how has your job impacted um, being being here? Greatly. Okay. I mean, I could guess, but I could use some more color um, commentary. Well, so I mean, usually you're really sad and tired, but how much more <laughs> sad and tired oh, are you now? Oh, that's. Set, I mean, you wouldn't think you right. can you can add more to that. So, so imagine, mm -hmm. imagine Jeff there. having. Are we up? Yeah, we're up. Uh, imagine having a full time job. I'm there. Imagine, uh, imagine it actually being more than full time because you have to do everything all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, then imagine getting another full time job for the second third of that day. Which one is this? <laughs> This was the first one. Okay. And then we add another full time. But if you love what you do, it's like you don't work a day in your life. I though. know. So I it's know. like really you're kind of lazy because you only have one other job. No, that implies that I love doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and you could not be more wrong. That, that little vein really says you do. Oh, yeah. that's the sleepy pulsing vein. This is the angry pulsing vein. No. A uh, balance. It's, uh, but now you can afford things like a, I don't know, like a PS5. Oh, uh, see, I uh, again, um, that sort of thing would imply time that one has mm. to uh, to spend on it. That would be the dumbest fucking purchase. Get a PlayStation. You, you can afford a smartwatch to watch the hours tick by. Well, sure. I've been. I'll tell you what I've been spending my money on, because I've been been spending a lot of it. <laughs> so, um, one having a cubicle. Uh, and spending a third of your life in it, um, you want to spruce it up mm -hmm. so that um, succulents is what I'm thinking. Well, I've got a big pile of succulents, Beautiful. yes. Um, but see, the the decorations in a cubicle um, work to resist the life sucking of the cubicle walls. Um, they're designed specifically to suck life force out of you. So if you if you pad them with fun. Um, it at least deflects some of that back to you. It's just like there's like six calendars, but they're all cat and dog <laughs> themed. Like you've got more than one up. On yes. Screen. Okay. Just <laughs> every square inch of it <laughs> cat, is just, cat it, calendar. It's cat just cal telling <laughs> me to telling me to hang in there, baby. <laughs> just all the cat motivational posters. No, I've been uh, I've been spending a lot of money um, on two things. One, uh, Funko is getting a lot of my money right now. Okay. Ugh, I'm glad that you've entered the year of 2010. That's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Um, one. Uh, two. Go fuck yourself, okay. Jeff. Uh, no, I mean, I, I didn't have money to purchase these things over the last several years. You've been holding off on buying Funkos. So <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> you've clearly never been poor. <laughs> Jesse sat outside in a cold winter night you, on his crutches looking into the target no, just, window it's just like looking <laughs> at Funko Pops of various media he I'm wished just, he could be in. I just uh, no, I haven't like been the ideal window shopping is just like going years. going to the GameStop and like perusing the Funko aisle it just was being just like one day. You mm. continue. I'm sorry. What's the second thing? No, you just you're going to beat me to death with my with my poverty. Um <laughs> And well, I almost beat myself to death. You're rich in Funko Pops. Uh, I am. Yeah. I, it's kind of ridiculous at this point. Hey, welcome, guys. Good to see you. Good to have you. Oh, look at this. Look at the. It's it's growing, everybody. All these people love this show. Uh, they actually do. I I think everybody. You've been. Yeah, you guys. You were here last week, weren't you? Or no. <laughs> Two very similar guys, and you would not expect that. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> to hear that <laughs> the other two of you uh, <laughs> came here last week. And you have a bit? No? Oh, okay. Um, I'm bleary-eyed uh, all the time. Well, then I shouldn't fuck around. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm, I'm surrounding myself with memories, I'm with happy. reminders of all the things that I enjoy. Okay. Because so much of my nerdy bullshit is represented in, in Funko. And, and don't have like any other merchandise otherwise. What's your favorite one, just so we can end on this? Oh, I was momentarily hap happy yesterday mm -hmm. because I went to the cave on my lunch because I'm right there, and there was a there was a scarlet spider oh. waiting for me. Wait, the uh, with the hoodie that's ripped? Oh yeah. Oh sweet, that's my yeah. favorite. Oh yeah. well, there you go. See, okay. see, um, we're back. We're back. Jesse. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing that I spent a lot of money on today, uh, it. I wish I'd done this like 20 years ago. Now it's going to cost me like 10 times more, but I'm. It's my my. Uh, <laughs> my quest to fill out my uh, a 
original Garbage Pail Kids first series. Uh, and they are so expensive <laughs> right now. Um, but I, I did buy, I bought 13 cards today on eBay. I'll let you imagine how expensive that was. <laughs> Let me say like 130? Um, more. Wow. Okay. Not much, but a little bit more. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing now that I have uh, <laughs> That's important money. lore to go into the show with. Yeah. <laughs> now that I'm gainfully employed, <laughs> I can finally waste it again. Oh, it's such a, di- it's such a change from being able to spend nothing except on paying bills. Like every scrap of money Jeff Brown that ever came in for the last five years had to pay to keep me alive. Look, I was just telling Now Milk, I'm trying to have some joy, Jeff Brown. <laughs> I was telling Milk out in the lobby that I was just, my mom offered to buy me something nice for my birthday and I just turned 40. So, well, you know. Then we're all living. Then we're all in the same financial boat currently <laughs> where we're hoping our mom will be nice enough to buy us something for our birthdays. Oh. Amen. Yeah. Well, I've, I've consistently gotten birthday and Christmas money. And <laughs> for most of my life, had to use it. For rent and bills. Uh, <laughs> yay! <laughs> so, um, nobody can talk bad about state work to me. So wonderful. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, this um, probably, hopefully, uh, not surprising to anyone, is not the show. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes. I needed At to point leave. <laughs> <laughs> I needed uh, to <laughs> <laughs> needed to just remind you guys. No, you're you've got let's say better ahead. <laughs> Ooh, okay. uh, let's get the actual program started. Um, welcome, um, formerly Channel 3's John Alston. We'll let you guys know um, what this is. Just make sure that's turned up enough. And cool. Let's switch to that. We're also streaming, so I have to take care of those. I've so many hats. I wish I had so that you didn't see all this. Um, all right. <laughs> Let's do the gosh darn thing, shall we? Roughly 24 to 92 hours ago, Stab's team of comedy scientists commissioned three specific humorists to give various potentially comedic takes on several random topics, we'll which they will now perform for the first <laughs> And That's likely not. last time, in front of a live studio audience, in a show called <laughs> Stab. Stab occurs presently! Sorry, that's a weird way to start. <laughs> the show that challenges its audience to a battle of nits. Whoever picks the most wins. Now, let's introduce tonight's panel. Our first panelist once challenged the sun to a staring contest, and it went about as well as you'd expect. Their co-host of Thursday's streaming on Stab TV, it's Milk Surface. <laughs> Our second panelist can tell you in the entire rosters of any World Series team since 1909 with just the use of Wikipedia. It's so she's a wonderful performer, Sierra, Ramir- Sierra Ramirez. Hello, everybody. Oh, Hello. Too many R sounds. Hello. And our third panelist doesn't believe in gravity, but chooses to stick to the ground just so he doesn't blow your fucking minds. He's a member of the Mom Hat Studios. It's Jeff Brown. And I'm your host, Jesse Jones. Zero percent animal, vegetable, or mineral. But 100% pizzazz. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Welcome to the Stab Show. Hey, did you know that if you're in the very immediate downtown or Sacramento area, on Saturday nights at 11 p.m., you could turn on your radio and listen to the Stab Show? Don't have a radio? Don't have a radio? Isn't it about time you got one just for this specific purpose? We think so. Now let's meet tonight's panel. Uh, Milk. Hi. Hi there. Hey. How's it going? Oh, so long. Using the awake voice, the show ready voice. Hi there, Milk. Hey. Hey. Energy yeah. Oh, one of these days. One of these days, I'll give that a try. Um, how are you? I'm good. I, I'm excited. I'm ready for the show. I had the most time I've ever had for prompts. Am I not on? What are you doing? Very much like it. I didn't think so either, but you know, I'm I'm ready. Yeah. Do you want? You can use mine if you want. Do you want to use mine? Want to use mine, milk? Oh no. No, you and I are this. We're the same. We're a lot. We're very alike. Oh, it was working earlier. I thought it was intentional. Jesse just didn't want me to be archived. Oh my god. Yeah. You're more of a visual, you know. Yeah. 
looks a visual experience. I don't know. <laughs> a cartoon you watch on mute. Uh, look, I watch everything on mute. I just have captions on for everything. I don't know what things sound like anymore. Uh, All my captions are just little emojis. <laughs> Yay. Hey, hey, milk's back. Wait, that's not milk. That's me. <laughs> All right. Is this a beautiful mind situation? Where <laughs> you guys are all oh. figments of my imagination. This is so much louder and heavier. It is. All right. Let's get this started. Apparently I need to use two hands. I'm, gonna... I'm not going not gonna to add to that. Um, hey, hey. Man, welcome. Hey, thanks. Hi again. there. No, it's not again. This is the first right. time. This is the first time. Insert Adderall Don't joke make here. the editing harder, Milk. Uh, <laughs> hey, I don't have to do it, so. Welcome. Good yeah. to have you. Um, to you do a lot around here nowadays, and I can yeah. never thank you enough. Um, uh, the thing that people will most know is uh, you hold down a lot of the Thursdays. Yeah. Um, I missed last month because of various things, but yeah. I'm glad to get back into it. For Doing sure. a lot of sketchy friends here uh on stab on Thursdays yeah. in the digital space, drawling uh -huh. and whatnot, preparing for a big event called Overdrawn Death Pageant. Mm -hmm. uh, I just ripped off the rules for Champed Up, and I'm doing that again. So everyone tune in on May 19th, 3 oh. p.m. Okay. Yeah, it's like a Champed Up, but everybody gets like two weeks to draw instead of 90 seconds. Yes, yes. So, so full artistic render masterpieces. Yeah, and the first right, one... Jeff? <laughs> the first one was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and Jeff is very excited to be a part of it. I don't draw, so <laughs> I don't know well, why I'm involved in it. I don't know. Yeah, the, the panel of uh, or the roster ranges from people who constantly professionally do art and only that, all waking hours. <laughs> and me. <laughs> and Jeff. Um, no, and, and other various comedians and funny people. Got uh, Eric. Uh, Barger, not oh, Barber. Nice. Uh, just to just to give a stab audience oh. and and watchers a, a clue of to some of the directions it's going. Man, so that's yeah, that's gonna be quite the range. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so I'm good excited. to have you and good to be able Thanks. to hear you. That's helpful. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. I have a mic. Sierra. Hi, Jesse. Hey, your mic works. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, it works. Uh, we've got class money, so I'm gonna buy some new mic cables. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, hey, how are you? I'm pretty good, Jesse. Thank Finally you Finally got asking. you on the gosh darn show. Very happy to be here. Um, I know you had, uh, you had asked, and I am bad at getting back to people, but we're finally here, and I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, how are you? I'm okay. Yeah? Uh, I've been looking for a job. Oh. And it's not fun. No. It's very stressful. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, there's always a state. <laughs> oh, I know. They're, they have many of my applications. Yeah. <laughs> they, no, it took me do. quite a bit myself. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, uh, what, what, are you, what are you doing for, for fun and entertainments? <gasps> what are you? You've got shows. You've got stuff that you, that you do. Let me know more about Sierra because I know woefully little. Oh, well... I um I host trivia. Yes, that's, there it is. That can be fun. Yeah. Um, uh, um, I also make art, and I've been doing that more regularly, nice. and that is. She more was looking fun. at you, Milk. Yeah. <laughs> Do you draw characters? I can. Well then, I think it would be cool. Next time, I can I can fit you into the roster oh. then if you want to be part of a. I think it would be five cooler. Five-week endeavor. If, a little. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll talk after the show. Okay. Because cool. yeah. I, I think I've seen some of your stuff. It's more physical media sort of Oh, thank stuff. you. Yeah, I sure do. But so like, I think that'd know. be I think that'd be a cooler angle to take. Thank yeah, you. it's not limited to drawings yeah. for, for ODP. Yeah. So I'm there you go. That. I think cool. that would be a lot of fun. Thank you. There you go. I might, um, yeah. And I have cats. <laughs> That's even more important. They take a they lot draw. of time. Oh, oh. my God. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you said that like they've tried and failed miserably. <laughs> They're <laughs> all failures. <laughs> you just oh. look at your fridge with cat paw <laughs> art and you're like, these fucking <laughs> useless <laughs> cats. Still oh. have to put them up. Otherwise, they'll know. Yeah. Um, well, good to have you and good Thank to you. have, um, in the moment, booked you on another thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm excited. Ooh. Jeff Brown. <clears throat> What's up? 
Hi there. Hi. Um, you know, just hanging out with you guys, mm -hmm. uh, starting show. Yeah, yeah. No, I just I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on inside though? Um, lots of lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. Lots of feelings. Okay. Um, that I usually let out. The problem is, um, I do it like uh, when you pinch a balloon uh, to let the air out. It's all screams, <laughs> and, <laughs> and kind of sounds a little farty sometimes too. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, sometimes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. Um, how was Mom Head Studios? Uh, we're fine. We're all alive. Good. That's um, a start. Yeah. Uh, we have a we have a stab problem right now. Oh. Where. We've got like six episodes of Listen to Player <sighs> Two. They're just sort of sitting there. Oh. Just one of my favorite podcasts. Oh, thank you, Bill. Oh, well, what do you know? Um, they're just kind of sitting there, um, and they're just waiting, just waiting for someone to. Jesse, do you have time? Uh, I well. know you have two <coughs> jobs. <laughs> Air quotes, indeed. Yeah. Well, one job, but uh, <laughs> hey, you know, yeah, which it's which is it's, the real one. I mean, and, and editing podcasts is just. You love it. Yeah, it's the least fun thing a person can do. Sure. Sometimes. And I just, sure. yeah. But no, everyone's doing good. Um, Kim has hinted, possibly. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is for the air. Oh. Um, Secrets on the mic. There has been a conversation about a potential return to California. Why the fuck would she? She's a property owner. Yeah, I know. Why I, would she do such a thing? You can live in Alabama and own a house, or you can be in California and have everything that Alabama doesn't have. <laughs> own so your body? Own your Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Milk. So that was it's a conversation piece wow. maybe for the next time you see Kim virtually. All right. Well, I... um, but yeah, aside from that, nope, all the same stuff. Although Danielle and I are uh, workshopping a new podcast because we don't have six episodes of another one we haven't <laughs> released. Uh, if anyone's interested in uh, the TV show Ghost Hunters. Oh. Yeah. All right. Looking it's a for little bit of a, it's a bit uh, of a, a, a strong guilty pleasure in our apartment, <laughs> okay. and we need to involve other people in that. Okay, it's like a weird polycule. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Well, if you're looking, <laughs> we want to bring on guests. Let's just get this. Everybody's going to get on each other's shows. Yeah. Yeah. the end of this is what's going to happen. This show, yeah. this stage is too incestuous right now. <laughs> it is just entwined. It's, it's gross. Uh, no, I'm doing good. Yeah, and and yeah, I'm fine. Well, good. Thank good you. to have you. Yeah. Good to have all three of you. Let's start this gosh darn show. Yes, again. Still wasn't the show. I know this is confusing. This is why we're not on Crackle yet. Segment one. It's reorganization. Tonight's reorganization is one that is clearly near and dear to your host's heart. It's nice to finally find a club that truly gets me and what I absolutely cherish. It's often difficult to find a place where one truly feels they belong, but in the GLMC... I've indeed found my home. The GLMC, you ask? Ah, of course. You wouldn't know what that means, would you? Why, it's the good-looking men's club of Carmel, New York. I'd teach you some of the handshakes and vague, undefined criteria for good-lookingness. But looking at you too long makes me want to throw up. So, <laughs> instead, not you. I can see out of the corner of your eye. You're fantastic. Um, <laughs> so, instead, let's quickly forget what I just told you brig troll bridge trolls that glmc stands for it's a real thing i in my searching i got glmc the good looking men's club they sound like just amazing people <laughs> uh so let's forget what glmc might already stand for and instead give me who or what else glmc might stand for or represent to you milk surface glmc hello incels neats investors and otherwise unrizzed individuals <laughs> Thank you for having me here at GotCon. I want to introduce you into the future of bachelatory atmosphere. Our team has scraped every bit of usable information from countless fanfics, from Austin Powers to Jane Austen, to create an assisting tool to help build a stage to encourage and perform willing coitus towards with the bystander <laughs> you have afflicted your affection on. Introducing Generative Love Making Conditions, or GLMC. GLMC is a new type of machine learning that actually generates a real environment for sex. Okay. Not only will it continue to leave you with undeveloped skills or be used in unethical ways despite the technology being capable of just solving many humanitarian needs, mm -hmm. It will do all the work of setting up a sensual environment to make your suitors salivating with absolute bonk hunger. GLMC will cycle through various jazz songs, purple lights, candle scents, and other horny 
ornamentations faster than a prince estate sale while scanning for increased moistness, erectivity, and other signs of removable pant indicators from any human in the designated fuck enclosure. Okay. We are continuing to develop this tool, getting data from literally anyone besides the people who would be using it. Hmm. While most surveys did enjoy the extra fingers sprouting from various surfaces, no. we've managed to patch that out, and next year we even aim to remove all the holes from the condoms within the GLMC, as our developers and investors <sighs> strongly believe in controlling birth rates of the general public. Mm -hmm. Despite incredible results of an AI creating an entire tangible environment designed to drive two adult people to engage in intergenitalial entertainment, we haven't had a single successful penetration or oral engagement. A simulation with a watermelon in a wig did prove the concept, however. Now we need our community to pull efforts together to make us money. If you, <laughs> you, or, or anyone you know has felt the touch of a lover within five inches of your gravy spouts, please contact us or continue to not read the user agreements on various things you enroll into so we can collect your intrusive data and fluids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're done. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Lots going on there. Um, but weirdly, in my um, sleep deprived haze, I think the, the thing that I took uh, was you have to leave at least one hole in condoms. You can't remove all the holes. Well, actually, Jesse, <laughs> this is a, a really good and interesting debate <laughs> on topology. Just, just saying that it has to... <sighs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> when Milk. you said when you said fucking closure, yeah, I was I immediately thought of that scene from Jurassic World <laughs> where Chris Pratt is in there with like the three ve Velociraptors, mm -hmm. but it's just like three people who kind of look like me but sadder. So. <laughs> that is quite arousing, actually. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> complete with electric fence. <laughs> You're not getting away from this, clever girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Sierra, hi. Um, Hello. I'm expecting this is going to be exactly the same. Um, <laughs> let's hear uh, your first foray into this thing we call the Stab Show. Let's hear GLMC. Grandma likes magic cookies. It's true. Grandma's house always smells like cookies and weed because she is always baked and baking. Always fresh cookies in the cookie jar. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Help yourself. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no. Oh, okay, you can eat those. Uh, those <laughs> ones, these ones here are Grandma's special magic mm -hmm. cookies. Uh, they have raisins, so you don't want them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, I didn't didn't realize all this time <laughs> that grand grandmothers have been using oatmeal raisin to keep you away from the real good cookies. Yeah. Oh, it's just faux raisin. <laughs> They're just big, <laughs> big clumps of weed. <laughs> it's a lot of firsts as far as things being said out loud tonight, and I think faux raisin, along with <laughs> everything Milk said earlier, <laughs> my kind of. Oh, thing. you act like I haven't said gravy spout on this show before, <laughs> <laughs> or at home. <laughs> uh, there was another one there that I can't remember um, that got Jeff, but um, it was the bonk. Yeah, whatever the bonk, bonk. one was. What was the bonk one again? Uh, oh, we can't. We can't. <laughs> okay. Bonk it. hungry. Bonk hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Don't know what it is, but it sounds <laughs> appropriately wrong. I just I could not think of any like sex euphemisms. All you had is sex <laughs> euphemisms. I, I mean, those took those those were hard to get. It's better to create your own. <laughs> the current crop is just ugh. It's all sticky and gross. Uh, <laughs> Jeff. Hi. Hi there. Hi. <clears throat> Let's see what you have in the way of a GLMC. <clears throat> Hello. Yes. My name is Dr. Herman Morrison, renowned child psychologist and author of the best-selling parenting book, Kids, Who Do They Think They Are? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, parents, has this ever happened to you? Child. Daddy, you said we'd get ice cream after dinner. But after dinner, you just fell asleep on the couch. Why didn't we get ice cream like you promised? Dad, uh, uh, whoops. Or have you experienced this? Child, 
Mommy, you said you'd pick me up after school, but you never came. I had to get a ride home from the lunch lady. Why did you forget to pick me up? Mom, uh, uh, uh uh-oh. And I'm sure that we've all dealt with this situation before. Child, Daddy, you said you would love me no matter what, but lately your demeanor has been cold, and I do not feel as though you cherish me as a parent should. Do you not love me anymore? Dad, uh, uh, pass? (laughs) Ha ha, kids, they're complicated creatures with inquisitive minds. And while every parent hopes to develop their offspring into a well-rounded, productive member of society, it can be a hard road because we may not always know how to handle the hard questions. I usually do better at this part. (laughs) That is why I have developed a tool for parents to use when faced with challenging questions from their children. When little Susie or little Timmy has asked you about something you can't answer or don't want to answer, simply remember the acronym GLMC, Gaslight My Child. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. Children are inherently stupid and naive creatures, which makes them the perfect targets for gaslighting. (laughs) And so long as you remember this fact, paired with my patented GLMC method of parenting, you will never f- struggle with tricky parenting situations. Let's see how GLMC would have helped the parents we met earlier. Child, Daddy, you said we get ice cream after dinner, but after dinner you just fell asleep on the couch. Why didn't we get ice cream like you promised? Dad, hi, baby. I'm not sure what you're saying. I, ice, ice cream? <laughs> ice cream. What's that? Well, child, what? <laughs> D- Daddy, ice cream, like chocolate, van- vanilla. Dad, oh, sweetie, I don't know what you're talking about. Ice cream isn't a thing. I've never heard of that in my life. So I could never have promised you we'd get something that doesn't exist, right? Hmm. Child, what, I'm, what, what the fuck? What? <laughs> Dad, now run along to bed now, sweetie. Daddy has grown-up work to do. I love you. See a powder keg of a situation diffused thanks to GLMC. Let's see how it works with our other parents. Child, mommy, you said you'd pick me up after school, but you never came. I had to get a ride home from the lunch lady. Why did you forget to pick me up? Mom, sweetie, I think you're misremembering. I told you that you should drive yourself home after school. Mm. Remember, I gave you the keys to the Kia this morning. Child, what? Mommy, I'm just a kid. I'm seven. I can't drive... (laughs) Mom, honey, you're the smartest kid in your class, which is why I trusted you with driving yourself home after school. Mm. You always talk about how you're a big girl, so I gave you a big girl responsibility. I don't see the key out front, baby. Where's mommy's car that she asked you to drive home after school today? Child, mommy, I don't know. Mom, hmm, sweetie, if you lost mommy's Kia, then we're going to have to discuss cutting your allowance. And if I can't trust you with keeping track of Mommy's Sonata, then I don't know if I can trust you with $5 a week. I love you, sweetie. (laughs) Another situation diffused with the added bonus of de-appropriating the child's allowance. (laughs) Now let's look at GLMC in action once more. Child, Daddy, you said you would love me no matter what, but way we use demeanor has been Mm -hmm. cold, and I do not feel as though you cherish me as a parent should. Do you not love me anymore, Dad? Oh, sweetie. Daddy never loved you. <laughs> Exceptional! <laughs> a perfect use of GLMC. This parenting tool can help with a variety of challenging questions and scenarios you may face with your child, including, but not limited to, death of a pet. <laughs> oh, sweetie, goldfish? How could a fish be made of gold? They'd sink to the bottom of the tank. Mm. You must be confused. Canceled vacations! Hun, we did go to Disneyland, remember? You fell asleep in the car and didn't wake up until we got back home. <laughs> Impactful world events. 9-11, oh, sweetie, you know as well as I do that jet fuel can't melt steel beams. So remember, (laughs) you may not know how to patent, but with my helpful guide, you'll know how to GLMC. Gaslight my child. Those are uh, future Funko Pop owners, aren't they? (laughs) Oh, Oh, hey, there it is. Oh, that was many pages. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> There's three on the ground yeah, right now. That's the first that's that's the first novella we've had, even with you here here, Jim. You can't look, I learned from you. That's true. I'm the problem. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that could be said for so many things. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, all three of you. Uh <laughs> It's segment two, it's bootlegged. Bootlegs. They just work.
That is, when they're gussied up in the guise of a remake. And tonight's edition of Bootleg is specifically focusing on the bootlegging of things that, have ar- that, are things that already have remakes. Uh, it's an inception of a lack of creativity. And no, Inception isn't included this week. So in Bootleg It, you're asked to take these world-renowned successful properties and give us your dollar store flea market bargain bin knockoff, counterfeit, or bootleg version of each of them. So... Um, I've never seen any of these I, movies. Yeah, Have y'all? <clears throat> oh, good. Okay. I watched the original of the second one. Okay. Yeah. But not the new one. I haven't got that far. But I read the wiki. But the three of you all strike me as such pop culture knowledgeable <laughs> folk. <laughs> Pum- Funko Pop owners is what you're saying. <sighs> Milk. Yes. Let's get us started on this fucking shot in the dark <laughs> of a of a segment we've got here. <laughs> uh, you know what? It works. It works. Or we'll see if it works. Uh, Milk, let's hear, does. let's hear your bootleg. Uh, a star is born. Um, establishing shot. Noon. We see Jack NameGenerator.org. <laughs> he was once an unimaginably handsome musician, but now is reduced to being a failed man at a bar. <laughs> he sits there with a presence that tells you he's a man worth your respect. That's when he hears Allie singing to herself. Allie, being the kind of girl at a bar during this time of day, regardless of the job applications, needs someone to guide her. She's a girl with a dream and no way to follow it on her own, not because of a male dominating force that financially backs the entertainment industry, but because of her girl brain. (laughs) <laughs> Luckily for her, he is still more capable than a woman who has spent years developing her passion and pursuing it as a career. As Allie finds her path in a music career thanks to his gracefully gifted intelligence, charisma, and networking opportunities that supersede what she could ever femininely achieve on her own, yes. she now leaves Jack on his own after he spent countless minutes emailing a producer he worked with 10 years ago. <sighs> Because of this, we see him spiral out of control alone with some kind of substance we would usually equate to being morally corrupt. But because it's related to a man and man sadness, <laughs> we feel hurt in a way that doesn't make me feel weak. The end. No. Oh, oh sure. and the movie's oh. called A Star is Grown by a Man. <laughs> yes. It's the only way stars are grown. Uh, man, God. I flings... <laughs> Space dust out there and says, you're a star, bro. And that's a star. Wait, wait, wait. A star is born like the Lady Gaga movie, right? Yes. Okay, just yeah. making sure. I read. I started reading the wiki, and I go, no. So I pulled up a, a chat bot and asked for the shortest summary possible, mm. and it read a lot like, man helps a woman because he's a man. Yeah. Sorry. Was yeah. there a question there? No. No. <laughs> I was making sure it was the right one with the the other two. It seemed a little, yeah. I don't know how you compose this list. But. I don't. I I say three things, and then they're written down by someone. Um, I'm usually not there. Uh, Sierra, let's hear your uh, star is born. Jesse. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just have um the new titles of these films. That's fine. Okay. Uh, every answer is r- correct. Mm-hmm. Um, so a star is born bootleg version is love and addiction make successful art careers. <laughs> yes. That's I believe accurate. Yeah, like ninety five percent. I believe that's how most art in our world is made. Yeah. Good times. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with humanity. Uh hey hey, hey uh Jeff. Hi. You be the other Texas toast slice uh, on the other side of uh, Sierra's uh, thin slice of cheese. You two have the big old bread. Uh, <laughs> where the fuck are you going with this? He's saying you'll also be long. I'm here yes. at the end. I got it. Yes. Continue. Let's hear what you've got in the way of a star is born. Yeah, I also had to Google a lot. Okay. That's um, fine. So I have uh, a star is born, the board game for adults. <laughs> Also, I think I said this on one of the other episodes where you had us do bootleg is yeah. like I still my 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 brain just has a hard time with this concept for some reason. <laughs> That's all right. I, and I don't know why. <laughs> so I tried real hard. A Star is I Born, <laughs> the board game for adults. 
take a trip down memory lane with A Star is Born, the board game. A fun time for adults ages 21 and up. Finally. Is that okay? Yeah. Finally. A board game that combines the stress and frustration of Monopoly with the blood toxicity concerns of alcoholism. Hmm. The first board game slash drinking game combination, players take turns rolling the dice and moving through the trials and tribulations of Jack as he struggles to cope with the, music, the musical success of Allie, the woman he loves. Uh-oh, looks like you rolled a two, which means uh, you landed on the, quote, Allie performs on SNL Square. All players take two shots and lament how you hate your brother, but really, you hate yourself. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. You, ha- you kind of have to, like, know the movie, I guess, a little bit. <laughs> no. And Milk summed it up, and, 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 and honestly, like, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just a bummer. Yeah. 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 And I didn't want to give the ending away. Uh, we've already, I think that bridge has been crossed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, I have no problem with you guys having no idea the movies. Right. Because uh, then that adds that extra layer of, I don't know, something like this. It's cool because <laughs> now I don't want to watch it. I've read the wiki. I'm just like, <laughs> cool, I'm out. Yeah. I'm good. Oh, watch but, the original. No. It was, who's, who's the original? I don't know. Okay. Somebody. Okay. Uh, yes. Oh. No, there was, Judy Garland was before Barbara. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then... Fact and then checks. there was a version before that. It's, this this movie Thank has you. been. This is like the fourth version, I think. I oh, like really? That. Yeah. Because that's uh, the theme. They're it's a tale as old as time. Yeah. These are all movies that have been remade. Mm-hmm. For some reason, a yes, star is born. I see it You're now. just now getting that. <laughs> yeah. It's literally how I set it up. I was just every for some reason when I read A Star Is Born, I just kept thinking Five O Goes West for some reason. Sure. So if we throw mice in this, I might watch it. Yeah. I mean, why not a. Uh, an animated, that's the next step. An animated adaptation of A Star is Born. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel so uh, cheated. I, bootlegging is one of my favorite segments, mm-hmm. like categories. I know nothing about movies. And Jeff over here, like, bootlegged it into another medium. Well, yeah. I should have done that. I should have thought of that. Your, your mind, There's Jeff. no wrong answers to Guys, anything. We Unless are, Jesse tells you it's wrong. And we <laughs> are 22% into this show. We've got to keep going. Um... Hey, Milk. Hey. This is supposed to be the short segment. Oh, Milk. don't worry. <laughs> yeah, that that block of text doesn't have me worried at all. Milk. Yeah. Let's hear your bootleg dune. All right. So uh, this isn't so much a bootleg, but a pile of uh, notes by the people who bought the screenplay of the Dune animated series, thinking that meant they could make their own Dune movie because they were into NFTs and didn't know how copyright works. Okay. And so there's just a lot of gibberish, but circled is uh, Atradi's nuts, and then underneath that says lawyers that accept Bitcoin, question mark, and the rest is nothing. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, that's, a, that's a new kind of cop-out. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jeff, you're it. right. He does say <laughs> Prophecy came true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys, trust me, you're not the only group chat that I'm talking about in that I don't know about. Uh, <laughs> Sierra. Jesse. Hi. Hey. Oh. Well, let's hear what you've got in way of a title mm-hmm. for a Dune <laughs> bootleg. Mm-hmm. It's another tale as old as time. <laughs> Uh, destroy the land, kill the people, money, money, money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yay. Precise. Huzzah. Yes. Yeah. It works. Uh, oh, you guys take so long on your prompts. Remember, I'm Jesse. <laughs> oh, it's the 80s. The 80s the movie. Um, <laughs> thank you, Sierra. Hey, yeah. Jeff. Hi. Just quietly be mean to me somewhere else and give me your bootleg <laughs> dune. On DVD, (laughs) on the far reaches of the galaxy sits a planet coveted by creatures far and wide, a world rich in a resource sought after by the wealthy, the powerful, and the horny. (laughs) Mm -hmm. A world named Poon. (laughs) Journey with our hero, Balls Atreides, (laughs) as he fights and fucks. (laughs) His way across the world of Poon mm-hmm. to secure the universe's supply of lube. 
from the evil Baron Hardcockin. Will Balls get his hands on enough lube <laughs> to conquer Poon? Or will he fail to measure up against the vicious sandcocks that populate Poon? Starring Jeremy Absman as Balls Atreides, <laughs> Lucas Ironshaft as Baron Hardcockin, mm-hmm. and welcoming Suzanne Swallows as the beautiful and mysterious Fanny. <laughs> Directed by Brett Ratner. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, if for nothing else, just the deliberate pronunciations of poon and lube. <laughs> lube. I was asking Danielle, I'm like, what should the planet be called? I'm, I'm talking to her at home. I'm like, should it be lube or poon? Hmm. She was like, poon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You gotta. That's a loving relationship. <laughs> yeah. You guys are going to make it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Our 10-year anniversary is this month. Oh. Happy what? anniversary. Thank yeah. you very much. Congratulations. We haven't planned yeah. anything yet. Oh, that's all right. Don't. Yeah. That's Don't the loop look. anniversary. <laughs> oh. Mm. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Boon. Uh, <laughs> milk, let's close yeah. out this gosh darn bootlegging uh, with the most recent remake that I know of, though something was probably released between... Uh, this Wednesday when I wrote this and tonight that has supplanted that already. But let's hear your bootleg roadhouse. Yeah, so hey, Grandpa's always <laughs> talking about old classics. Want to bond or otherwise just change the direction of a conversation you're stuck in? Introducing the TikTok Tiny Theater, the shortest cuts of movies you don't want to actually watch that are enjoyed by people who have opinions you don't care about. Hmm. First one, Roadhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> Roadhouse. <laughs> Roadhouse. Yeah, you gotta fit it all in those few seconds. <laughs> oh, okay. That was the entire. That was the entire. <laughs> entire TikTok. Okay, that's fair. Jesse, have you been on TikTok? No, I have not. Mm. Blessedly, I have not. It shows. Yeah. Thank you. I'm gonna take that as a compliment. Uh, Sierra, uh, let's hear yours, which will actually somehow be longer than Milk's. Uh, <laughs> your bootleg Roadhouse. Ally Shack, starring Patrice Swanky. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. 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 Oh, Patrice Swanky. Yeah. Hey, buddy. It's Patrice's way. <laughs> or you go fuck yourself. Patrice Swanky. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> I was just enjoying that. Uh, Jeff. Hi. Let's wrap up bootleg and let's hear your bootleg Roadhouse, please. I like the original Roadhouse also. Yeah? Yeah. It's good. Good. From the production company that brought you West Coast Gerbil Fights <laughs> and Parking Lot Grandmas, Too Hot for TV, comes a straight to DV series, a DVD series that will rock your world. Yeah. Waffle House. Uncut and uncensored. <laughs> Enjoy 482 hours of the biggest hits and the weakest tips as chaos reigns supreme in what consumerreports.org calls a stark and shocking display of humanity's id. Imagine the movie Roadhouse, but someone gets their throat ripped out for real while bystanders eat grilled cheese and try to ignore what is happening around them. With narration by Rob Schneider and music by the Squirrel Nut Zippers, directed by Brett Ratner. <laughs> oh. Each additional detail somehow made it work. <laughs> I've never been to a Waffle House, actually. I will never admit. been to a Waffle House. There's I, not one here. Well, has anyone been to a Waffle House? I haven't been no? to a Waffle House proper, but you get the yes, you get really? the gist. <laughs> Obviously, yes. Your, your greasy spoon, uh, sort of thing. Uh, well, wonderful. Uh, thank you, guys. We're off into segment three already, just like that. Oh, how many Southern lawyers? Let's see. It's closing arguments. There are some things that are really hard to defend, unless you're a lawyer. And then it's your job to defend the not easily defensible. That's why you get paid the big, shameful bucks. Making people, if only long enough to set your client free, forget just how loathsome their client truly is. It's the American judicial system hard at work. In closing arguments, it's your job to convince the jury that your client isn't nearly as bad as they might seem to be. So go on. Work the system. Milk surface. Let's, I mean, I know you don't, you get the general idea. Uh, I hope I do. Well, we'll see. Let's hear your closing arguments in defense of coming out to the parking lot to find your car damaged. This might be funnier if you've memorized Wikipedia. Mm. (laughs) 
Yeah, Test the ninth here. You have come here to listen to me as a defender of what you can only see as a blemish on all that is good in your life. But I am here from the rooster's cock to the candle's smoke because I need you to not only know, but to believe that I am an emanator of art. <laughs> While you grabbed your limited churro-flavored Oreos, a sign that things are always changing, your car stayed still, rigid, masculine, a testament to the self, your capabilities, the trough, the yin. <laughs> As many before, you asked what apple is better, the honey crisp or the Fuji, a sign that things are always the same. <laughs> it's at this moment, a comprehensible but unknowable car, most likely a Tesla, moves through the lot with power, force, femininity, hmm. a testimony to the other, the uncontrollable, the wave, the yang. The carriage of your journey now changed beyond simply adding a honk if you love honker stickers. Your perceived future of watching reality TV and fantasizing yourself being so close to somebody's pants mistake of the evening. This is mm -hmm. art. From the handprints on the cave walls to the bumper print on your Chevy Nova, mm -hmm. art is all about showing us that everything is an inescapable cycle of constant change. But with it comes growth of the self and your insurance premium. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I had an oh. existential crisis during that one. Yeah. If you know Hebrew, there's an extra joke in there. Yeah. I was going to ask uh, which article was uh, lovingly... Uh, gently edited <laughs> to make your response. <laughs> it's found art. That's yeah, right. yeah. No, no, it, no, no editing. It's just you have to know what a test is. Yeah. Uh, it helps if you know about the Nova complex. Sure. You know? Sure. Very deep, yet very shallow at the same time. Yeah. That's amazing. A paradox. Yeah. You're a <laughs> you're a pool of wisdom, the deep end and the shallow end, all in one place. Uh, well done, Milk. Quality job. Uh, hey, Sierra. Hey. Oh, this is somehow sadder. Uh, <laughs> Sierra, let's hear your closing argument in defense of a child dropping their cup cupcake and it landing icing down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. That's the point. <laughs> People of the jury, you see here sitting before you my client. <laughs> A good for nothing, butterfinger, son of a bitch, <laughs> who can't be trusted to hold steady a simple cupcake. Mm. And yet, fair and noble jury, you know as I do, they deserve a second chance. Mm. Do not rob this four year old's chance at a future for dropping a cupcake. Mm. Their motor skills are still developing. Their arm muscles and reflexes are still being strengthened. We can lock this child up right <laughs> now, but what good will their labor do us? <laughs> the free prison labor of this weak <laughs> child will cost the taxpayers trillions of dollars a month. Uh, wow. That's true. That's true. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But. Let this child roam free. <laughs> go out into the world, grow older, stronger, go to school, fall in love. That's when we arrest them again, folks. <laughs> then yeah. their free in prison labor will improve the economy, decrease taxes, create jobs, and make America great. <laughs> and you, wise, righteous, perfect jury, <laughs> can sleep well every night knowing you saved this child's life and you saved America. Oh. I rest my case. Oh, wow. Powerful. Thanks. Very powerful. <sighs> I didn't know the child was on trial. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the concept of a dropped cupcake, but you know what? Fuck that kid. We'll see you in 14 years. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sierra. Hey, Jeff. Hi again. Hi, welcome. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm <laughs> I'm going to restrain myself from the the inspiration of yours. 
Uh, we'll talk after the show. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, let's hear your defense, your closing arguments in defense of someone who calls eavesdropping ear hustling. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm a simple man. I live a simple life. I live in a simple town. I drive a simple car. Well, I'm just a simple southern lawyer. I don't drive over the speed limit. I don't butter my toast. <laughs> and I don't fool around with carbonated beverages. And I'm happy. But there are days where I wish I were something more than simple. I wish I could experience a world that's a bit more colorful than my odorless, suave shampoo lifestyle permits. <laughs> a world where caution is thrown into the wind, a world where anything can happen. My client, a man who is on trial for referring to eavesdropping as ear hustling, <laughs> is only guilty of one thing, adding a little flavor to our little world. <laughs> Now, me, you ask me what I do with my ears? Well, sir, I listen. I hear. And that's about the extent of how I describe what these here fellas do for me. But my client, ear hustling. Mm. <laughs> Just saying it out loud makes me feel like I'm at Mardi Gras. Drinking a margarita and raising my shirt for all the folks on the street to see. Mm -hmm. My client's only crime, ladies and gentlemen, is daring to dream bigger than listening or hearing, or eavesdropping. <laughs> Mind you, the crime they are being charged with is not dropping eaves, but the manner in which they describe doing so. <laughs> and if it's a crime to paint the world we live in with a more colorful palette than we're used to, well then let's lock up the poets, and the <laughs> artists, <laughs> and the folks who use emojis instead of words. I, well. Because if you convict my client of ear hustling, then the next time you LOL in a text, the thought police might be coming for you too. <laughs> oh shit! I arrest my case. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Still not good enough for me. Uh, <laughs> but that's, that's the right. first time I heard the the southern lore like really play into the theme of it all, like oh. neededly. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Very good. Very simple. Yeah. Very simple. The southern lawyer makes you think. It, it <laughs> does. I did. We did. Mm -hmm. Uh, segment four, it's Angry Poems. Oh, art is art. Anger is art. Therefore, angry art is double art! Or something like that. Whatever the case, anger is your instrument and poetry is your canvas. And I know you don't usually play an instrument on a canvas, but... L l I, uh, <sighs> just let me have this unraveling metaphor. Um, in, a, in write an angry poem about it, You've been asked to write some angry poems, as the segment title might suggest, about the following subjects. Milk. Let's hear. I realize this can be taken uh, in ways. <coughs> Let's see which way you decided to take things. The normal. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> let's hear your angry poem about White Lion. Oh, this was hard. I never am angry or rhyming, so, mm. okay. you know. <laughs> Not black as night, but veiled in white, a tiny fib just out of sight, mm. a gentle sway, a touch of grace, to spare a heart, to save a face. Noble of me to think of your confidence, only kind words by no means of impotence. However, if you were to do the same, any sense of kindness would be in vain. Mm. I am no child hungry for sugar coated. Okay. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Don't patronize me with your <laughs> crow uh, cowarding charade. Uh. A detective known as Anxiety. Lost hours of sleep is his only fee. I will make up the evil truth that you spared and will be damned that you even dared. Mm. These tiny falsehoods, they pile up so high. A mountain of, for sure. <laughs> That reach the sky. So next time you think of a lie with a grin, remember the white hot anger within. Ooh, wow. That's. Whew. I don't know that this is the venue for that. You gotta get yourself <laughs> to a coffee shop stat. Uh, find the poetry night. Go to the Target Starbucks real quick. <laughs> yeah, just just yell it. If you can't get a Target Starbucks, 
Go to the Safeway. The Safeway one, one will yeah. do. Yes. <laughs> you gotta start somewhere. They don't <laughs> let me in Safeway after the last <laughs> poem, so. Uh, thank you, Milk Sierra. We've Jeez. heard a we've heard an angry poem about White Lion. Yeah. Let's hear an angry poem about Big Crying. Yeah. Fuck you, Big Crying. <laughs> Making my eyes all puffy. <laughs> You know I prefer to bottle my emotions and later explode. <laughs> I can't smell the roses now, big crying. My nose is too stuffy. Mm. Big crying, fuck you. <laughs> I'm all alone here in my abode. Overwhelmed, stuck, hopeless. The cats won't shut up. <laughs> Give them some food. Please, kids, be fucking quiet. <laughs> okay, thank you. Mommy loves you. She's sorry for what she said. <laughs> Mommy can't keep giving you food all the time. You no. need a diet. Jackson Galaxy says your dry food is junk <laughs> and muck. I'm the awful mom who feeds you junk and muck to shut you up. Big crying, fuck you. Save me. This could be the end. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Wow. So much power radiating from the stage tonight. This is amazing. We've all missed our calling. <laughs> Thank you, Sierra. So good. Oh. I, I don't want... I, she needs less food, but she won't... Mm. We switched over to, to wet food because J Jackson Galaxy said to do that. I know. And that shit's expensive. I know. Yeah, and they're picky. I don't understand it. You mm. should want to eat all of this. Anyways, I feel your pain. It's they're ungrateful. Yes. Yeah. They don't know how much hard we work for this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cats. Uh, thank you, Sierra. <clears throat> hey, Jeff Brown. Hi. We've heard an angry poem about white lying. We've even heard an angry poem about big crying. So let's wrap this up with your angry poem about just trying. Okay. So like most of my prompt, uh, the prompts that I do, mm -hmm. uh, it takes a while sure. to kind of get to where I'm going. <laughs> okay. The, the, the acronym doesn't pop up till paragraph 17. We're, so. we're going on this journey with you. Yeah. All right. Just trying. <clears throat> the masses, their Sunday mass, a stampede to their church of savings, their manifest destiny, a cart full of items in bulk. The line to communion stretches through the parking lot, $1.50 pizza <laughs> instead of wafers. The body of Christ comes free with a drink. Carbonated blood fills your cheeks, dead-eyed and smiling as you enter the gates. Heaven awaits. St. Peter checks your membership card. Dues are paid. Judgment day at Costco. Mm -hmm. The throngs <laughs> seek out salvation. 45 cans of chili for $2. 17 pounds of sugar for a smile. Eternal savings for your eternal soul. Immersed in greed, gluttony, and you come to me. A pittance, I ask. Taste of my wares. Today, a new flavor of cream cheese. Tomorrow, a new spin on cream soda. And you sup. <laughs> and you sup. And you sup. <laughs> and I ask, would you take some home with you? Here is my body. This is my blood. Would you add this part of me to your mountain of excess? You have sampled me. Have I left you wanting? Will you buy Nabisco's new take on an old favorite? <laughs> Cheez-Its with the flavor baked right in. A barbecue sauce that is to die and be reborn for. No. Just trying, mm. you reply. Mm. Just trying, they all reply. A garbage can full of toothpicks and soiled napkins. A sample cart empty and cold. I hate my job. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. All right. You guys just went for it today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we stopped we stopped being a comedy show for The vibe was very different minutes. on all three of ours and I love that. <laughs> yes. I think it was great. Yes. But it was all I could feel. <laughs> I could feel the true <laughs> anger <laughs> within all of them. Well done. It's gotten us to segment 5. Oh, it's the final segment. I'm sorry. I could have you here all night, but we've got other shows. I've got seven so. other pages. Oh, no. Oh, okay. No. Uh, it's segment five. It's movie makeup. More movies, you say? Well, hell yes, more movies. Except this time, I want something a little more original. Or however you decide to take this. I don't know. But yeah, 
we're not done with the silver screen after bootlegging it. No, it's movie makeup time. I haven't been out to a picture show in a very long time. So you are bringing me a night of mind movies. You got a problem with that? I didn't think so. So in movie makeup, your task with giving us your synopses of these made-up movies based on the following titles pulled from the various random title generators of our friends at SeventhSanctum.com. So, let's hear your silver screen or straight to the Dollar Tree DVD section masterpieces, Milk Surface. Yeah. Um, that, 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 that. Oh. Uh, please. Let me, it's my one job. Okay. Milk! <laughs> let's hear your synopsis of your made-up movie, Cute Emperor. Yeah, so yeah. I, I just have pitch notes Okay. Uh, for this one. I, like you, I don't go to the movies often. Yeah. So Q Emperor is like supposed to be a like kid's film okay. to teach like Roman history and everything. <laughs> um, and much like uh, Netflix and other streaming shows, they just keep going, well, well, can you fit this in and this mm, in? And so sure. they're like, how can you make it horny? How can you, uh, how can you put a GLMC into it? You know, advertise this thing. You know, no. uh, how can we really <laughs> show Caesar getting stabbed and all that? Um, and just it, every new correction just slowly breaks a man down uh, until it just becomes basically uh, almost pornography allowed on Netflix instead of. Uh, an educational dream ambitious project that uh, an animator had. Mm -hmm. and that's it. Oh, yeah. Uh, just uh, development hell noted to death. Well done. Well done. I think the first note was <laughs> make it horny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like this animated film about uh, Roman em emperors for children. But can you make it horny? Look, we're gonna we're gonna green light this Paw Patrol's live action show, mm -hmm. but we have one note for you. First one off the top, can you make it horny? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Veggie Tales. Very successful franchise. Horn it up, yo! Yeah, have you ever seen any Bluth movie? Like no. they sneak it in somewhere. <laughs> well, thank you, Milk. Hey, how could people get more milk surface in their lives? Should they choose such a thing? Uh, you can wish upon a star yeah. or go to milkmyth.com or just, I don't know, watch uh, stabtv.com. Mm -hmm. I'll probably show up somewhere, especially on Thursdays. Yeah. Yes. Join us on Thursdays. Oh, what? Are you going to be somewhere Sunday? Oh, yeah. Oh, do you have yeah. something going on and this Sunday? And for the first time ever, I will do improv on stage <laughs> yeah. uh, this Sunday at 8 p.m. Yes. Yes. In Duel Duel 5, uh, along with Frankie Lord in the team Tableless Behavior. Yeah. Um, that, is, that is wonderful, but it's also a goddamn lie. I know, because you were in the jam last week. Okay, that so was on stage, but not on camera. Okay. There was no proof. All right, fair enough. I could be lying. Undocumented. I usually am. Uh, yeah, so Milk and Frankie, they're going to be one of the four teams for this Sunday's uh, preliminary Duel Duel 5. It's two-person improv competition. It's a lot of fun. Check it out either here or at home. I like how Frankie was holding up uh, cue cards for, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for Milk during that part. <laughs> That's why I took so long to say the name unconfidently. The, yeah. the cue card was smudged. And you can't read. I know you can't yeah. read. Yeah. Yeah, also. It's terrible. Uh, well, thank you, Milk. Hey, Sierra. Hi, Jesse. Uh, how are you? I'm great. <laughs> okay, good. So good. Just checking in. Yeah. You know, in segment five, I thought I'd see how you're doing. Sorry, thanks. I'm great. Uh, well, good. Uh, so happy to have you. Hey, Sierra, let's hear what you've got in the way of a synopsis. Yeah. For your uh, movie, I thought I'd give you something fun. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Let's see what you got. Uh, let's hear your your movie, uh, Dana Justice and the Saber Girls. Dana Justice <laughs> and the Saber Girls. <laughs> Young, lonely, uncool, sad child, <laughs> Dana Justice is playing with dirt in her backyard <laughs> in the year 1995, okay. making mud soup and singing to the bugs when all of the sudden, a saber-toothed tiger appears out of thin air. This saber-toothed tiger whisks, neglected and unloved, Dana away back in time to 9 million BCE mm. <laughs> where it is soon revealed that Dana is the youngest living relative of the human who caused saber-toothed tigers to go extinct oh, forever. Shit. 
This extinction altered history mm-hmm. and the relationship between humans and their environment. And the time has come for Dana to deal with the consequences of her ancestors' actions. Dana (laughs) is set to be executed publicly. (laughs) (laughs) In front of the entire Sabertooth Pride in 9 million BCE, Mm. on her way (laughs) to Execution Rock, Dana (laughs) begins to sing. Because she is sad and afraid, and and singing has always brought her joy and calm. Suddenly, a group of bipedal saber-toothed tiger ladies run up and protect Dana from her untimely death. These heroes introduce themselves to Dana as the Saber Girls. (laughs) Nine million BCE's most popular pop group. Hilarity ensues. And Dana learns Sabretooth Tiger language and becomes the lead singer of the Saber Girls. Oh. They go on tour and get a record deal back in 1995 and um, become very famous. Mm. And then the Sabretooth Tigers are not extinct anymore and all the rainforests are full and healthy and global warming is cured. The Hell end. Yeah. Nice. nice. That is the most original take on Josie and the Pussycats I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. And well done in your first appearance. So good, Sierra. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You deserved it. Lots uh, of fun. Yeah. Sierra, how can people um, get more Sierra Ramirez where they work in bank? I will be um, in the up coming in the second round of dual dual yes. five yes um team take your vitamins <laughs> me and cameron schmidt um that is the 28th of april okay check it out also i would love to invite you all to empress tavern on mm. april 11th uh for trivia night 7 p.m uh cameron schmidt and i will be hosting trivia it's very fun very cool place. Great prizes like mm-hmm. tickets to Crest shows. Ooh. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, April 11th, 7 p.m. Trivia. Cool. Yeah. And is that most Tuesdays? Well, I also or do. Thank you for the reminder, yeah, Jesse. Just, uh, I do host weekly <laughs> trivia on Tuesdays yeah. at Sac City Brews. Yeah. Do come there as well. <laughs> there you go. Um, and Thursday, once a month on Thursdays, okay. Empress Tavern. Okay. April 11th. I Empress thought Tavern. that was different. So you, you got more trivia. Thank you oh. for the reminder, Jesse. Oh. Thank five, you. Five nights a month you can get Sierra trivia at you. Yeah. Jeff. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Did that come as a surprise to you? I'm sorry. <laughs> no. But yeah. No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, here. Hey, Jeff. Howdy. Um, if people wanted to get more Jeff Brown and or Mom Hat Studios, what would they do about such a thing? Uh, they should look in their heart and find Jesus there to lead them on a better path. Sure. Um, but uh, if you really want to avoid the Lord's embrace, then <laughs> you can go to mom-hat.com. Uh, it's kind of a place where all of their st- the stuff that we do nests. Uh, we've got a variety of podcasts. You can literally just Google, if you like Goosebumps, you remember Goosebumps from your childhood? Yes, we have a podcast that talks about all those books. Two PhDs and me, not one of those. Uh, it's called Geesebumps. And we also have uh, Listen to Player Two, which is another podcast that is still kind of going. We have um, The Roles We Made, which is a Dungeons and Dragons podcast, which has not had a new episode in a while, but you don't know that because no. you're starting at one and it's okay. fine. There's like 80 episodes. Um, I'm here on Milk. What's the name of the thing that I'm doing later on in May? <laughs> Overdrawn Death I'm pageant. at that. Yeah. Uh, I'll be doing that online. Um, I'm here a fair amount. Um, yeah, just, you know. It's <laughs> you can add, I don't, like, at this point, just add, like, I don't care. Add me on stuff. Like I used to sure. be like, don't, I'm going to private my shit. No, I need friends. I'm just turned 40. <laughs> it's hard to meet people. It's true. Yeah. So true. That's why some people. Start comedy theaters. Uh, <laughs> How's that working out? Oh, fantastically. <laughs> uh, Jeff, let's close out this episode of The Stab Show 
Let's hear your rundown, your synopsis for your new made-up movie, Shark Engineer. Shark Engineer. The World Tournament of Engineering and Science is two months away, and things aren't looking good for the East L.A. Engineering and Science team. Listen, guys, we've placed last at the big engineering and science tournament every year for the past ten years. I know we've got the heart to win the gold, but unfortunately, I just don't think the math is adding up. Aw, yeah. oh, come on, coach. You got to believe in us. Give us one more chance, and I'm sure we can make the numbers work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure, we might be the underdog engineering and science team from East L.A., but we've got something those other teams don't, and that's heart. I don't know, boys. I don't even know what coach's voice was originally. <laughs> I don't know, boys. <laughs> heart might not be enough. I just got word that our star engineering and science player, Hubert McCalculator, <laughs> has come down with a case of getting a girlfriend. <laughs> and Shit. won't be joining us this year. I just don't know how we're going to do it. When all hope looks lost, it turns out that all you need to succeed is a little heart, a lot of luck, and a friend from beneath the sea. <laughs> guys, guys, I found a replacement for Hubert, and I think they're going to give us a real shot at winning this year. Wow, that's great. Who is it? Guys, meet Greg. The shark! <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck! From Touchstone Pictures and Amblin Entertainment, and from the producers of Airbud and the director of Con Air, comes a tale of family, friends, and a shark that can do math. <laughs> hey, 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 ref, there's got to be a foul call. That East LA engineering and science team's player just ate my star engineering and science player. Hmm, well, ain't no rule in the rule book says a shark can't do math. I'll allow it. <laughs> this fall, the math just makes sense. Watch Shark Engineer, releasing October 10th in theaters everywhere. And make sure to buy your tickets early through Fandango. Is Fandango still a thing? I think so. Through Fandango to score a limited edition novelty Shark Engineer popcorn <laughs> bucket, which doubles as a limited edition novelty Shark Engineer sex toy. <laughs> of course it does. Oh, Jeff Brown. It's the crossover between Jaws and Stand and Deliver that we didn't know we needed. And Air Bud. <laughs> oh, and of course Air Bud. Yes. And... The Stab Show is over. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. And, of course, a very special thank you to our incredible panel, Milk Service, Sierra Ramirez, and Jeff Brown. Say, that was a lot of fun, right? Well, you know, the only way it could be more fun? Catching it live as it happens. And you can do that by either coming to stab, uh, coming out to Stab Comedy Theater in person or tuning in to Stab TV on Twitch. Friday nights at 730 or if you'd like to take the Stab Show on the go with you, just subscribe to Stab on the podcast provider of your choice, be it Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or the Good Pods app, for this and 393 other similar but different episodes. But that's all we've got for you tonight. So until next time, I've been your host, Jesse Jones, reminding you to practice kindness, but also be sure to brush up on fucking shit up too, just so you're ready for anything. Good night. Thank you, guys. That's the gosh darn in program, but you know what? The evening here at Stab is just getting started. Nine o'clock, we've got warm takes. Ten o'clock, it's LOLGBT Plus presents Say Yes. So it's a whole lot of evening for you. Uh, if you want to stick around, we'll take care of you up front. If you're done with us for the evening, thanks for coming out. Check out stabcomedytheater.com for a full calendar of events. I'm going to strike this and get stuff ready. Thanks, guys. So sweet, no. little girl double dutch on the concrete. Maybe sometimes we got it wrong, but it's alright. The more, the more things seem to change, the more they stay the same. Don't you hesitate?
It's strange. Just go ahead, lift your head down. Sapphire and faded jeans. I hope you get your dreams. Just go ahead, lift your head down. Girl, put your records on. Tell me your favorite song. Just go ahead, lift your head down. Sapphire and faded jeans. I hope you get your dreams. Just go ahead. Guns and bring your friends. It's fun to lose and to pretend. She's overboard. She's self-assured. Oh no, I know a dirty word. Hello, 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 how low? Hello, 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 how low? With the lights out. Less dangerous. Here we are now. Entertain us. I feel stupid. I'm contagious. Here we are now. Entertain us. I'm a lotto. An albino. A mosquito. My libido. Yeah. At what I do best, and for this gift I do feel blessed. And our little group has always been, and always will, until the end. Hello, 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 how low? Here we are now. Entertain us. I feel stupid. I'm contagious. Here we are now. Entertain us. I'm a lotto. An albino. A mosquito. My libido.
So
What you want, and I tell you what you get. You get away from me. You get away from me. Collect my belongings, and I left the jail. Well, thanks for the time. Had to think a spell. Had to think a while. Had to think a while. The ocean breeze softly won't you carry it in in your head, in your mouth, in your soul. And maybe we'll get lucky, and we'll both grow old. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I hope so. Well, that is that, and this is this. You tell me what you want, and I tell you what you get. You get away from me. You get away from me. Collected my belongings, and I left the jail. Well, thanks for the time. Had to think a spell. Had to think a while. Had to think a while. Get away. 
away from me. I left my belongings and I left the jail. Well, thanks for the time. Had to think a spell. Had to think a while. Had to think a Yeah, this is a fun track to start on. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to the Stab Comedy Theater. It's time for warm takes. Please welcome to stage your host, Cameron Schmidt. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. The substitute teacher is here today. Uh, Are your two normal hosts for this show, Corey Berenger and Anna Haney, could not be here. I don't know what Emma's deal is tonight. Corey's got a root canal at two o'clock today and figured that he'd be indisposed. Not committed to the grind. Uh, My name is Cameron. This is the show called Warm Takes. Uh, It's pretty near and dear to my heart because it covers a couple of things that I like, appreciate, and uh, or love. Um, uh, The first half of everybody's set tonight will be their own prepared material. Stand-up comedy. You know it. You love it. Uh, And then eventually uh, we'll meander our way into some riffing, some warm takery uh, based on some prompts. I've got got an overall theme for my prompts and discussion points tonight. Uh, Shout out to anybody who can guess it throughout the evening. Uh, But I'm going to demonstrate a little bit of how the show goes, starting with my own prepared material. Um, So I'm just going to start. I was in third grade. I was nine years old, uh, and one morning, I woke up, uh, and I scampered down. I was living in Forest Hill, California. Has anybody heard of it? Been there? Very small little, you know, woods, woodland, not actual woodland, a land of wood. Um, and I went down to the living room, and my mom and my uh, stepfather were watching TV and crying. And uh, I was like, what's going on? Uh, and they were like, just go make yourself some pop tarts and hang out. Um, school starting late today. And I was like, "Yeah!" And I ran and made my pop tarts and went back to my bedroom and probably played Pokemon or something. Uh, then eventually, the my mom came in and said, "Hey, uh, we're gonna take you to school now. Um, so get ready." Uh, and I was like, "Oh!" And then I uh, got in the car, went to school, short drive, got there. Uh, and I went to my third grade classroom, which, which was Mrs. Benson's classroom. 
Uh, Mrs. Benson's classroom was the only uh, classroom in the building with TV that actually was hooked up to cable. Uh, and every adult in the school building was in this room watching TV and crying. Uh, and my teacher, Miss Benson, uh, came to me and said, hey, um, extended morning recess. Everybody's already down there. Just go down and play and have fun. We'll come get you in a little bit. And I was like, yeah! So we all went down. We played at, we played on the jungle gym for about two hours uh, straight, which, you know, uncalled for uh, in my experience at that point. Uh, and our main goal, usually at this point in my school life, was that we had a swing set uh, that in front of it, about 15 feet, I think, away, uh, was a garbage can. And for weeks, if not months, we had been trying to get any of us to launch from the swing set into the garbage can. So we just tried that for about two straight hours. We never got very close. And then eventually some uh, teachers came down and said, hey, uh, everybody come on into the cafeteria. Everybody come on into the cafeteria. We're all going to gather together. Uh, and we were like, <clears throat> uh, and we went into the cafeteria. Uh, and then I don't remember which teacher. I don't remember any of them except Miss Benson. But uh, some teacher, maybe the principal, I don't know, explained to us that uh, that morning 9-11 had happened. And that is... Uh, <laughs> My memory of 9-11, uh, honestly, for a solid three or four hours, is probably the greatest morning I'd ever had. Um, and then, you know, uh, they try to help you understand what happened. And, like, you got kids be like, what's New York City? And they're like, it's a pretty important city. And they're like, okay. <laughs> And then other kids are like, what's the World Trade Center? And the teachers are like, what was the World Trade Center? Um, <laughs> and then uh, the only other 9-11 memory I have beyond that, really, uh, a year later, I was living in Auburn in fourth grade. Uh, and on the anniversary, they had uh, every student in school had to write a poem about 9-11 and how it made them feel. Uh, and my uncle was actually, uh, at that point, overseas uh, serving in the army uh, in the resulting uh, bullshit war. And uh, I wrote it about him probably, I don't really remember, and every uh, grade had a kid selected to get up and read the poem. Um, and they made me do it because I think they saw that my poem was about my uncle. Um, and I was too nervous and I cried and I wouldn't read the poem in front of everybody. Um, and they were like, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, and my mom was there. And then driving home, um, my mom explained to me why my uncle was uh, serving in the Army. Uh, it turns out that pre-9-11, uh, the summer before 9-11, he was uh, dealing meth out of my grandma's apartment. And he took a uh, positioning with the Army rather than going to prison uh, once he got caught. And within a month of that, he... 9-11 uh, happened. So that's everything I know about 9-11. <laughs> uh, and that is all of my prepared material. I don't do stand-up normally. Um, and I've decided that I don't like telling jokes, so I did that instead. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, we'll go on to the rest of the idea of the show now with uh, the help of Milk. Everybody get up for Milk Surface. Thank you very much. Um, okay, well, I can't ask about 9-11, I guess. Um, I, I'm tapped. What are your, your warm takes on those gosh dang minced oath words that you use to replace cuss words? Oh, replace... I, I, I have a few that I like. Um, the one that has always gotten the biggest uh, reaction out of people is that uh, when I'm listening to rap songs that feature the N-word, I just replace it with my own name. I don't remember when I started doing it. <laughs> it is a real thing I do. Uh, my girlfriend only recently found out about it. Um, we've been dating about a year and a half. Uh, I told her that's what I did, and she's like, really? I was like, yeah. Uh, and she uh, thought for maybe a close to a couple of minutes, probably trying to generate a rap song that uses the N-word, and then gave me an example, leaving it blank. And I said, yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you don't know, now you know, Cameron. 
so that's the, always the biggest reaction I've gotten out of one. You guys all remembering? Yeah, it's Notorious B.I.G. Um, is that hypnotized? I don't know. Uh, when's that album coming? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I do like rapping. I used to be in a, uh, a freestyle rap improv group called Broken Boy Simmons. Um, and it was honestly a cool format for a show. Every show we did was a live album release party where we would like explain the significance behind each song that we improvised by doing scenes about them. It was a cool show. Shout out to Broken Boy Simmons. Um, but replacement curse words, I find them amusing. Like the old 90s, like cable TV, you know, edited uh, movies where they put in, instead of fuck, they say like, flip or whatever in a, a weird altered voice i think it's fun i think it's harmless i obviously don't care about curse words um i do produce morning television i work at good day sacramento so we like can't curse it's a fcc thing um I, I know i'm not on the show and i shouldn't be barging in but i was supposed to p potentially co-host yeah uh hi it's jesse <laughs> um the wizard of oz is i'm sorry here. but this is it's a subject near and dear to my heart too uh, I actually love and still use um, uh, it's a snakes on the plane one, mm. um, and I believe the quote is get these uh, <laughs> get these monkey fighting snakes <laughs> off this Monday through Friday plane, <laughs> <laughs> and it's easily my favorite. <laughs> that is pretty good. That is pretty good. I still think my thing with the N word is maybe better. I'm just kidding. They can um, live in harmony. Huh? They can live in harmony. Yeah. Um, you know, the world we all live in one world. Yeah. We need uh, to release a, a stab album, like a kid's bop, a stab bop that just does uh, all these replacements. Um I don't know about that idea. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know about that idea. Um, thank you very much, Milk. Uh that is my time. That is how the show works. People are gonna do prepared material. Hopefully hopefully everybody's set is not just remembering nine eleven. Um, uh, but we're going to move right along uh, to a very talented comedian. If you saw her in Stab, you know that she crushed it. She's also got other stuff going on. I'm sure she'll tell you about it. Her name is Sierra Ramirez. Give it up for Sierra, everybody. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I have a cat that likes to hump my legs. Is that relatable? <laughs> it's just me. Uh, I have a cat. He's a male cat. He's been neutered for like five years, and he still likes to hump. Um, he's got a blanket that he loves to make biscuits on, but when the blanket is on my legs, the biscuits go a little further. Um, what starts as real sweet, loving biscuits turn into kicking. He kicks, and then uh, that goes on for like a minute, and then he goes off into a corner and like licks himself. He like finishes himself off, and then he goes to sleep, and that's my boy. That's my boy. Um, have we ever uh, gotten our pets high or drunk on purpose? Oh, okay. Dogs, cats, what do we got? Dog? Hi, drunk. Hi. Oh! That's a... That's waka, a fun waka. time. The dog got really high and jumped in the tree after a frisbee. Damn, that's a good time. I uh, accidentally got my dog high once. I wanted to get high myself. I rolled myself a joint. And I, like, turned away for, honestly, a second. And uh, my dog, when I turned back, had the joint in her mouth. She was munching away. And I said, what a bitch. I called her a bitch. And then I was like, oh, my God. I was a little irritated. Of course, I wanted to get high. But then, you know, she got really quiet. And she got really still. And so then I got a little concerned. And then I'm like, OK. I did this to you. Um, I should make it better. So I like trip sat for her. I trip sat for my dog and it was like really special actually. 
I um we put on like nature documentaries and like space documentaries at first and like we had a really good time but then she started to get really stressed out and so then we switched it to like Bob's Burgers and then we had a lot better of a time um I made her like a little uh charcuterie board a charcuterie board with all of her favorite snacks we had we had carrots and broccoli and blueberries and blue buffalo chicken sweet potato pate like a nice like swipe of it on the plate like a like a cooking show um i prepared that charcuterie board for her i was in the kitchen and like when i came back out to bring it to her she was asleep so she didn't even eat it i ate it <laughs> <laughs> yeah um that's it that's my prepared material All right. thank you sierra you're welcome <laughs> yeah uh, we'll stick with uh, edible things for your mm. first uh, riff topic. Um, what do you think about honey? Honey? Tell me about honey. Honey, I love it because, one, um, it's, like, good for you, right? It's, like, anti... Mm, Microbial? Is that and the word? antimicrobial, I think. I don't know. And also <laughs> anti-inflammatory. Uh -huh. Is what I was thinking. I of. think the microbes are good. I think I was wrong. I don't, I don't know. know. Go ahead. But I like it, and I like it for that reason. And I like it because bees work really hard. Bees are really hard fucking workers, um, and they need to be protected really bad, really really bad. Um, so I really like honey, and then I get like depressed about it. Mm -hmm. um, and also. And also, and also, you can use honey like in instead of sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like really good for baking in that way. I haven't baked like a whole batch of cookies without sugar, like just using honey. But it's on my list. It's on my list. It's like right there. I love honey. Can we see the just visually? Where my list. Like honey is like right here. Okay. Uh, other things are like up there. <laughs> But honey's like right there. Okay. And it's, it's a long list. All. It okay. goes cool. all farther. The way down. Yeah. Um, just riffing on bees, do you think that you're like a worker or a queen or maybe one of the evil bees like a wasp? Oh, my God. What kind of bee slash Damn. et cetera are you? Damn. Well, if I'm being honest, um, I, I would, I'm probably a worker. If I'm being honest, I'm just a worker uh, and not just a worker, okay? Worker is a lot. Uh, worker keeps the hive going, okay? Mm. Uh, I'd like to believe that I'm one of the queen's favorites. Um, you know, uh, at least I'll tell myself that. I'll tell myself that, but also I'm a perfectionist, uh, and I need approval. And so, like, I will work extra hard. I'll work extra hard to get the queen's approval that's i'm definitely how you, that's how you became the favorite you worked extra hard yeah i am the favorite <laughs> i'm not a wasp though i'm definitely not a wasp i'm afraid Why? because they're i mean i have nothing against them um but i i don't like being near them uh because like they do just make me feel unsafe hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't like them. <laughs> I don't, I don't like wasps. That's fair. Totally yeah. fair. Yeah. Uh, and then lastly, uh, yeah. from bees and honey to flowers. Flowers? What you got on flowers? What? Sorry? What you got on flowers? I Do like flowers as well because um, they offer sweet fragrances mm. for those who can smell them. And <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you for being uh, inclusive. You know, inclusive, yeah, <laughs> not a joke. And um, they offer pollen for our sweet bees and our birds and our butterflies. Mm -hmm. And like flowers are just so fucking important. And like um, native flowers are very important. You know, dandelions. Okay, things that are like weeds mm -hmm. aren't really weeds. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep your fucking dandelions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Keep the clover. I'm sorry. Okay. I just there we I, go. I, I was going to ask a, uh, a favorite and a least favorite flower. 
Okay. Well, I really do like uh, dandelions and clovers. Um, but I think my very favorite would be like orange blossoms. I do love orange blossoms very much. And oh, my least favorite. I've never seen one in real life, but it's probably the one that's like smells really bad. The corpse flower. Ew. Yeah. yeah. That's my least favorite. Okay. I'm sure it's beautiful. Yeah. But it doesn't smell good. I'll take your word for it. Everybody give it yeah. up for Sierra Ramirez. Thank you <laughs> Thank so much, you. Sierra. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to pop it back in, and Thank we will you. keep it rolling with our next comedian. Traveled here today. Give it up for Mean Dave. Thank you, Mean Dave. Come on. Oh, sorry. I mixed up that order. Yeah, uh, sorry. Nina G, who also traveled. I mixed up our order. I wrote it down, right. and then I still mixed it up. Go, yeah, take it away. Yeah, no, here I am. Hi, everyone. How are you? I'm not Mean Dave. Um, I did come in the same car, so maybe that's how we got c confused. Um, so what you have to know about me before we go on to the riffing is that I am a, a stuttering stand-up comic, and I perform everywhere. Um uh, and, and I'm from the Bay Area, so I perform a lot in Berkeley, um, where the audiences are so politically correct that they are afraid to laugh at the disabled person, even when they're fucking telling jokes, okay? <laughs> Every single show. Is, uh, um, also, another thing about when I perform is, hey, hey, oh, um, the other thing about <laughs> performing um, is that a lot of times people think that I'm f faking it, okay? Like, um, you know, that because what what helps comedy timing more than a stutter? Um, and so I just want to be very clear. I have a rule that I don't f fake my s stuttering and I don't fake my uh, uh, orgasms no matter how long either one of those two things take. Okay, <laughs> they could both take hella f f f f fucking long, especially when they're on stage here at STAB and being broadcast across the internet. Um, the other, and, and the other p part of that is that st stuttering and orgasms, they have a, a lot in common, because if the other person would just shut up and stop interrupting me, I'd finish a lot faster, <laughs> so that's how that goes. That's the good man over there laughing at that. Um, all right, let's start with the fucking qu questions. All right. Yes. All right, Nina, I am ready. Let's get to the fucking point of this. Uh, your first question to get to all the point. Um, do you have any thoughts on fish of all kinds, S shellfish, swimmy fish? And, and, and is this fish to eat or fish to look at? You tell or me, fish Nina. To you tell, what do you th are you a fan of eating fish and or looking at fish? Um, I will not eat fish. I've never okay. eaten fish in my life, wow. at least on purpose. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. No, and I'm Catholic, so I didn't have anything to eat on Fridays. Yeah. Um, McDonald's <laughs> invented the the, uh, the what's the fish sandwich they have? The fish sandwich. The filet of fish. They the, invented the, the filet of fillet fish of for fish. the Catholics on Fridays. Really? Yeah. Is that what happened? That is what happened. And that is like the grossest thing. They invented they they invented the grossest thing and said, Catholics, this is for you. Mm -hmm. Which is not the grossest thing that's happened to Catholics. Um so <laughs> 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 molestation. Um and um yeah, so so aside from that, mm -hmm. I enjoy to look at fish. Um what I do, what I especially like are fish tanks. Okay. Fish tanks with like, with like a skeleton. Mm. The, yeah, like a little pirate uh, theme. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like that. I enjoy that. Cool. I, I enjoy like the gravel. The gravel comes in like ne neon pink <laughs> yeah. and that's fun. <laughs> I, I like that. Wait, I just asked. You, you said you like fish tanks and then you said you like the skeletons and the gravel. Do you like the fish in the fish tanks? <laughs> They're dirty. They're dirty creatures. And that's why you don't they eat them. They're dirty creatures. And I learned that when I was a kid because I had four goldfish. I won at the Catholic at the Catholic fair. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and what for those of you like some of you are a little bit older, the younger people, like I, I don't know if they had this because it was probably cruel punishment um was that you you would throw a ping pong into into a 
into a, a, a fish bowl, and then you would win that fish. Did did they have that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've seen that. Yeah. 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 And then mm-hmm. like the fish is getting balls thrown at it. Yeah. It's not something you find in the ocean. Um, <laughs> maybe where you are, I don't know. Um, but <laughs> to be t- tea bagged, to tea bag a fish doesn't seem like a nice thing to do. But maybe that's what you're into. Um, but yeah, no. So I so 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 I won. F- Four fish, mm-hmm. okay, and this was like circa 1982. Okay, I'm old. I know I look good for a white w- woman, but I'm old. Um, and I named them Lenny and Squiggy and Laverne and Shirley because the gold, the, well, one of them had like a black thing here, which then inspired me to name him S- S- Squiggy and the rest, you know, easy name after that and I just remember they would just have this big long turd hanging out and then you would just wait for the turd to come out and then when your mom's anal retentive as my mom was um you learn very fast that you can never have pets Mm. (laughs) that all of your dogs will be sent to the pound because because i know i know my dad so my dad had to send so many dogs to the pound (laughs) because they because the dogs were so cute they were so cute and then my mom would say yes to those and then they would get older and then and then they would sometimes you know pee and then um and then she'd say we have to get rid of the dogs and then my dad would like bring the dog to the pound and say he, he that he found the dog on S- 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 Sterling Avenue, which was where my g- grandmother lived. So he would lie based on my mm-hmm. grandmother's address. Um, <laughs> and then once, you know, this happened many, many times, uh, which is why I don't have animals now because I, I don't I don't have cats. I don't have any animals because I have attachment issues. Okay. Mm. Like, 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 I can't attach to animals because we'll just give them up. And it's a very painful thing for me. I've never had an animal die on me other than a turtle I once accidentally killed. Um, <laughs> and how do you accidentally kill a turtle? Um, <laughs> it's how really hard to you? do. It's real. No, I don't want to tie. It's too painful. It's too painful. It's too, this is why I don't have children. Um, and. Anyway, my dad brought the uh, brought brought our dog. Our dog's name was uh, S- uh, 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 Snowball, um, and Snowball went to the pound and he said, "I found this dog on Sterling Avenue." And the person at the pound was like, "Oh, I think it's a p- poodle," and my dad said, "No, it's a Maltese," because <laughs> he forgot his l- own lie. <laughs> Okay, what's what's next now that you've brought up these very painful <laughs> memories <laughs> about attachment to pets? I just want to remember, we started with fish. Um, uh, you already brought it up, and I have it on my list here. Uh, spiritualism slash religion. Oh, you spiritualism slash religion. Catholicism or, uh, you know, whatever else you got going on. Yeah, these well, you know, I've always wondered, what is the difference between an agnostic and an atheist? And I think I finally understand. An agnostic is someone who isn't sure there's a God, and an atheist won't shut the fuck up about it. Mm. So that is... <laughs> bunch of atheists here okay um yeah you guys are lots of fun at a party um (laughs) no and i've had that like i've dated these guys who are oh i'm so smart i'm so smart i'm an atheist i'm an atheist and um yeah you don't have to apostle size when you're an atheist okay just shut the fuck up about it and be fine i i i i i am a reluctant catholic okay like i just w- w- went to italy and my friends wanted to go to the v- v- vatican i'm like no no i'm not fucking going there i'm not going to the vatican this is like you know like they they have abused Catholics for years and like people like oh what the ch- child mo- molestation I'm all no like everything like the inquisition like 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 Catholics have been or the church I'm sorry not Catholics the church has been doing shitty things for centuries for centuries I mean ask uh, 
a Native American in, in the in California, like shitty, shitty stuff. Um, so, um, but but I did go to a CC in a CC. Does anyone understand what a CC is? It's where Saint Francis Saint is from. Saint Francis, right? yeah. very good, very good. Yeah, no, and that place was fucking cool. Like, like you could feel this uh, spirituality there. And like, I, what I really loved about it was that there wasn't any like anti-abortion stuff. There wasn't anything like anti contraception of course i couldn't understand italian so maybe there was but <laughs> as far as i'm concerned no, no. appeal <laughs> yeah. um give it up everybody for nina thank g you. thank you so much nina g uh keeping it right moving along another comic here from sacramento that i am a big fan of give it up for melissa mcgillicuddy everybody coming to the stage I feel like I have so many funny things to say about all of the other riffs, but not any that you're going to give me. You, so can, you can use it for that time. That's fair. Want. No. Um, so the, the plot to Pinocchio <laughs> is interesting, isn't it? Right? For those of us who don't remember, it's the story of an old man um, who wishes dolls into little boys. And his name's Geppetto. <laughs> That's all I have for that one. Um, <laughs> it's pretty good, though, huh? Um, uh, I, uh, I recently went through a breakup. Thank you. Um, it's pretty fresh, so we'll see how these jokes go. Um, yeah, we just broke up. Gosh. Two and a half <coughs> years ago. <laughs> Still feels like yesterday. Don't you hate it, though, when you're going through a breakup and everything reminds you of your ex? Right? Like, I was having lunch with a friend recently, and I went to go take a sip of water, and I got a little bit choked up. It's like, I'm sorry. <coughs> My ex drank water, too, um, in a glass like this and everything. I remember after the breakup, I called my mom to tell her that my girlfriend and I had broken up, and my mom was like, well, I was just about to call you to tell you that my dog died. And I said, well, it looks like we got two dead bitches on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure I'm recording this. <laughs> my mom was really sweet, though. You know, she could tell I was having a tough time with the breakup. I don't know if you guys heard, it is pretty recent. Um, so she got me like a fun little button up from Amazon because I'm a fun button up kind of guy. Um, but when I got home and I tried the button up on, it didn't, it didn't fit. It was, it was a little too small. Um, your boy's a man now. Um, and so my mom had given me a gift receipt, you know, so I could just exchange it and get whatever I wanted. But when I took a closer look at the gift receipt, um, it was not for the shirt that she had got me. It was... It was for something else she had bought, um, something called Muffin Mist. Yeah, I immediately went to a dark place. Um, but because it was my mom, I wanted to believe it was something innocent, you know? Like, I was like, maybe it's for baking, right? Just spray a little Muffin Mist on the muffin tin. Um, but I kind of get the feeling that Muffin Mist isn't for baked goods. Um, it's for when your goods are baked. <laughs> All right, that's that's that one. Um, by round of applause, how many of us have children? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so normally what happens is that a bunch of people clap, and then I'm like, well, this joke is not for you. But I guess this joke is for you. Um, I don't have kids either. Um, I uh, I was thinking, reflecting recently on on why why that is, you know, like why why I never had children, and I think it's because I don't like kids. Um, I think that's probably the main reason. But but like really, when I was thinking about it more, like in therapy, talking about it, um, I was like, I don't like going to the doctor, right? Like, I'll, I mean, I'll go for maintenance and repairs. Uh, but just, like, surgeries and, like, getting operated on, like, that just, like, totally freaks me out, you know? So I was like, there's no way I can have a child because 
any operation I'm going to have is going to be to save my life, not destroy it. That's why I never understand how people just, like, go out and have, like, cosmetic surgery for fun. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. No, this is how I look. There's nothing medically that can be done about it. Um, that's why I'm a cat mom, you know? It's, like, all the benefits of motherhood without having any operations, um, for me at least. Like, she cannot get enough of them. Like, she's had a tail enlargement surgery, um, whisker augmentation, uh, butthole beautification process. I mean, she had, her butthole was fine. I don't even know why why she did that. How are we doing on time here? What? I'm ready when you are, yeah. All right, look at that. I just knew in my butthole it was almost five minutes. Mm. Okay, let's do it. If the All first right. category is buttholes, I'm going to need way it more than five minutes. It is not buttholes, okay, but it is something that might make some people clench their buttholes. Oh, okay. Um, how do you handle social occasions? I don't. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> In case anyone else was wondering. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm one of those, like, introverts pretending to be an extrovert, you know? Like, I feel like that's kind of, like, why I got into comedy, because it was, like, you know how Batman was, like, afraid of bats, so he became Batman? I, yeah. Right. Like, so I was, like, oh, what's the most terrifying thing ever? Like, getting on stage and talking to people. Like, let's go do that for fun, you know? So mm -hmm. it's, like, I'm, I guess I'm kind of, like, Batman. Um <laughs> In a sense. Are there any other ways you're like Batman? What's that? Are there any other ways you're like Batman? Um, no. <laughs> All right. You faced your fears. I did, yeah. And I would argue you're both very successful at facing your fears, you and Batman. Oh, I think you meant like me and my two personalities. It's like I am a Gemini, <laughs> so it all makes sense. Oh, like, okay. yeah, okay. Do you dig astrology? Are you into? No, I don't really know anything about it, but I do know that whenever anybody asks me my sign, I don't want to tell them. You know, because uh. it's like I don't know. We get a bad rap, right? Does anybody know about astrology in here? No, okay. Because of the two personalities thing. Yeah, well, That's I guess we're just are? terrible people. I don't oh. know. Like when you look at who's a Gemini, it's like. Donald Trump and Kanye West are like the two oh. Gemini's. So that those are that's those to, are my the to be fair, Kanye West of course has gone through a couple of phases. I think Donald Trump's been doing the Donald Trump thing sure pretty solidly. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's got really one note. Yeah, very very one note. Gemini. He's got to have a very solid moon or yeah. rising, right? Um, to balance the twin energy. The way twins aren't Gemini, are they? Yeah, they are. They are okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about astrology. Um, well, how do you feel about bar snacks? Do you have any favorites? Oh, I am absolutely not touching a bowl of food on a bar table that mm -hmm. other people have been touching. Unless mm -hmm. I can, like, sanitize the pretzels beforehand. How would you do that? Just hit them with a little <laughs> alcohol wipe. Oh, okay. That's, that is technically edible, I suppose. <laughs> alcohol. Uh, and then, um, do you have any uh, experience with antibiotics? Oh, sure. Yeah, we've all had a yeaster or two. Like. <laughs> Topical. Yeah, I try, I try to avoid antibiotics, right? Because like, the more you take them, like, mm -hmm. the more your body like, can't. So I'll just have an earache for like three years. Like, this is fine. <laughs> this is fine. My, build, my body's building immunity. I feel you on that. With this earache, I can now have bar snacks. Is that a seasonal thing, like earaches or stuff, Al allergies or anything like that? Or no, just, just a solid three years. Bad of, like, ear problem. Yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> feel you there. I feel you there. Uh, and finally, uh, let's talk about... I feel like this is a test. I'm like, last question! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll, we will say finally. Uh, it's tax season. Oh, yeah. You're speaking my language. Tell me about it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I, I'm an auditor, but I'm not that kind of auditor. But a lot yeah. of people will come up to me during... They're like, oh, so you're an auditor? Like, I have a tax question for you. And I'm like, Sure, I'm not that kind of auditor, but go ahead. But actually, when I was younger, I got my very first job. I was like 14 or 50, I'm 15. I was very ambitious, and I had to start paying taxes. And my mom was basically like, oh, so you know how to do taxes now? And she just like slid her paperwork over to me, and I've been doing um, her taxes ever since. So if anybody needs help with their taxes this season, I've done my dentist taxes. Um, I've done my ex-girlfriend's dad's taxes um anybody who needs their taxes done come on through like it doesn't seem like the bar is very high <laughs> it's a very low <laughs> bar with snacks <laughs> all right but 
sanitized. Yes. Uh, everybody give it up for Melissa McGillicuddy. Thank okay. you so much, Melissa. Uh, maybe eventually we'll find out what kind of auditor you are. You know, uh, it's so funny. Last time I did this, I did the, a joke about being an auditor, and I'm like, oh, but I'm not that kind of auditor. And then a lady came up to me, and she's like, what kind of auditor are you? I was like, don't ask questions you don't <laughs> want the answer to. All right. All right. Foreboding. All right. Give it up for Melissa one more time, everybody. Uh, and finally, we'll welcome up our last comic tonight. Give it up for Mean Dave. The order is correct. Hey, how about you slap your hands together for everybody coming up here? Doing this wonderful audition for another Warm Takes show. I, I it's cool. I, I, I and also give it up for Cameron, my Cameron. Did you get that, my I Cameron? His back. joke about what the yeah. All right, that's Cameron, my Cameron. No, I mean anyway. So anyway. <laughs> I shouldn't say my Cameron. It's not my word. Um, but, but yeah, this is uh, Warm Takes with Low Stakes. I love, a, I love a comedy show that feels like an old school porn theater. You know, like we don't want to make too much noise and draw attention to ourselves. And it's that awkward. <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, uh, my name is Mean Dave. It's just a nickname short for Meaningful David. Get that out of the way. Thank you for the, for the almost the laugh there. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I, a lot of time we've been talking about pets a lot lately. So it just got me thought, thinking about my, I had pet very close to, uh, an animal cat when I was young. Um, and her name was flower. So kind of connection, weird, weird interweaving psychedelic connection to all of this collective consciousness shit going on right now. And, um, uh, flower was my best friend. She adopted me really. Cause we just got these cats and then she was just like, I like you. And I was like, all right, cool. We're cool. And, um, but Flower did pee all over the house, as was mentioned earlier with the dogs that were sent to the pound. And again, Nina and I are children of the 80s, or grew up like born in the 70s, but grew up in the 80s. And back then, um, my mom actually said, hey, Flower needs to stop peeing all over the house because we might have to put her to sleep. And I was like, can we just put her outside? Why, why do we have to kill her? You know, because I knew what that meant. And back then, pets were a little bit more disposable, if you will. They didn't have the rights today that they have, like they can vote and shit, you know. And because um, we, I mean, we know Biden's hoping for the dog vote. You know, that's really going to save him this year. You know, all those in favor say woof. And um, but the fact is, uh, you know, back then, if a, if a dog or cat died, you'd be sad, bury it in the backyard. And a few hours later, you go to the pound, find one looks closest like it, bring it home, name it the sequel. You know, I got flower two, flower harder a few hours later. But um, so actually, that was the thing. My mom was just like she was just really kind of felt kind of cold, you know, about all that. And Flower lived to the ripe age of, of 18, though. We figured out her peeing problem. I actually took the heat for her. I said, actually, I'm the one peeing all over the house, Mom. You're going to put me to sleep. And she's like, I'll get back to you. And uh, But we made it out of there. And then the weird thing is, I have this weird thing where it's like, now today, I'm all for people's sensitivity to things. However, when it comes from the same people who were so cold-blooded 30, 40, 50 years ago, then I get a little, I get a little pissed off because... Uh, in 2010, uh, I was battling drug addiction and forced to move back into my parents' home rent-free. And while they were, while I was living there, they had six cats, four outdoor cats, two indoor cats. They grew cats like weed, and all of them peeing, pooping everywhere on the house, over the house, through the house. None of them getting the threat of death that death that Flower got when I was a child. So I was a little resentful. And then when I moved back out of their house uh, a few years later. Um, they decided to keep me from ever moving back home by moving three hours away to a city called Ukiah, uh, which is no one goes there. Um, you only go there to get gas on your way to Humboldt when you're trying to get weed. And like even fire at one point, there was it's in the North Bay, kind of it's north of the North Bay. And fire, went, there was like North Bay fires a few years ago. And at one point, fire surrounded the city of Ukiah and even fire did not want to go to Ukiah flyer was like that's a waste of our time and energy we're just going to let these people live in that shithole town so what, before they moved though i asked my mom i said you got four outdoor cats that you're responsible for are you just going to leave them for the new owners to handle and my mom said well two of them we've been bringing them in the house the last couple months so they trust us so we're going to bring them with us and i was just like no they're feral they're like their natural habitat of the suburbs of union city you want to leave them there and she was like no they trust us so they, we can take them and um, and obviously they take the two indoor cats with them. So they moved. And then a few uh, like a few months after they moved, I did a comedy show near where they lived and they surprised me at the show. And I didn't know they were going to be there. And my mom was like, Dave, you were right. And I had no idea what she was talking about. And I was like, I'm right about what? I'm not your son. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. 
And she was like, no, Dave, you're definitely our son. We wouldn't be at this comedy show if you weren't our son, okay? We don't support the delusions of strangers. I'm like, I appreciate the support. But um, I said, what was I right about? She said, you were right about the cats. And I'm like, ooh, plot thickens. What happened to those cats? And she said, well, we moved into the house, and uh, the cats were all obviously skittish, but um, after they settled down, uh, we let them out in the backyard, and only two cats came back, the two indoor cats, naturally. And I laughed because I love being right. And uh, my mom didn't think it was funny, obviously. She was like, what do you think so funny? And I was like, Mom, I warned you not to take those cats with you, and you told me they trusted you. And you rewarded that trust by drugging them unconscious, putting them in a cage, essentially catnapping them, driving them three hours away from their natural habitat, which in cat miles is halfway around the world. And when they woke up in this new environment, freaked out, you let them out in your backyard, which is like, you know, the Ukiah Hills, with a whole new host of predators ready to murder them at every turn. You know, it's pretty much like the equivalent to the Vietnam jungle to anybody who's not familiar. And my mom was like, okay, I see your point. I just hope if anything happened to him, it was a quick death. And I was like, I am not letting you off the hook. I said, I don't think it was a quick death at all, Mom. I'm pretty sure it was long, slow, painful death reminiscent of medieval torture. Whereas I've read in the history books, they used to tie up a human body to like four different horses and the, they would go in four different directions until the, the limbs would rip apart and the body would bleed to death. Well, in the case of your cute little kitty, it was a, a fox, a crow, a vulture, and a coyote that each grabbed a cute little paw and dragged your cat out to a dark and lonely gravelly road in the Ukiah Hills. And they each picked a direction, north, south, east, and west. And as your cat was meowing loudly in pain, ripping apart, slowly bleeding all over the dark and lonely gravelly road, that's when a cougar encountered nature's satanic ritual taking place and started furiously masturbating, watching this whole ordeal, knowing that the cougar was going to get to eat all of these animals once this blood orgy was finished. And I always just love seeing reactions to this move when I'm doing that. Um, and I, said, I, I told her, I said, I'm pretty sure this process took a long, slow, painful three to five hours. And naturally, my mom was like, you know, I raised you? And I'm like, she was like, why would you say such a horrible thing to your mother? I said, well, mom, maybe my mother should have thought twice before she threatened a seven-year-old's cat with death for pissing too much in the fucking house. Because maybe that seven-year-old will grow up with a grudge and, you know, and become a mediocre stand-up comedian someday and tell a long-winded story with no real punchline just to illustrate to strangers <laughs> the importance of having a consistent attitude towards your pets throughout your fucking lifetime. So I hope that was five minutes, but there we go. It sure was. All right, that was definitely prepared material, though. Yeah. So right on. Bring on the takes. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Um, anybody, real quick, before we start, do anybody want to guess our theme, our seasonal theme? No. It's not Catholicism. No. Uh... We're getting warmer. Spring, April. Things that people are allergic to. Oh, nice. Okay, that was a good, good secret fucking thing. Yeah, yeah taxes. you know. Thank you, Melissa. I, I didn't yeah. want it all just to be like nuts, fish, <laughs> meat. I got to look creative. So speaking of one of the more creative 9/11. things. 9-11. Yeah, uh, quote, adulting. Yeah. What was that again? Adulting. Adulting. That's a dumbass word. Yeah. Uh, it's just for growing up. I, that's one of those words. It's a buzzword that gets, you know, kind of like right now, one of the buzzwords. What was one buzzword that's pissing me off right now? Um, it's not literally, but I'm literally pissed at literally right now, too, because it's blocking me from the word that there's just these buzzwords like adulting. They yeah. get made up into these words it's like adulting is not a verb. But we start making it. It's that's I, I'm not going to say it's white people slang, but I'm pretty sure that's who came up with it. And uh, and I don't like saying things, putting it on white people or whatever else like that. You know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing, because, you know, you got a bad enough white people, you know, time, you know, you gotta, everybody's we? coming down on you hard and there's not many of you left. So got to let you have your time while it's still there. So <laughs> but uh, adulting got to be adulting about it, I guess. I don't know. I so that's just it's one of those words that I'm just sort of like, oh, great. A new word. Mm -hmm. that I got to pretend to you know be pay, be serious about or whatever so, yeah yeah um being any, adulting thoughts, about it. any yeah. thoughts on water uh drinkable or you know pool ocean i'm not swim. i mean i'm thirsty yeah i mean yeah i could use one if you got a bottle i mean I'm, I'm joking i'm joking okay. yeah. um uh what thoughts on water it's the uh it's the fucking blood of life god damn it i mean uh i used to not drink it i used to drink exclusively coca-cola without a sponsorship um as a child uh, I was just a child, and I, I don't know why, where it came from. Or, I mean, it was just, you know, and I, I should have all my teeth rotted out based on how much I drank. And my friends used to make fun of me uh, when I got to junior high because I, I would drink nothing but, but Coca-Cola. And they're like, when Dave uh, gets married and, and, and has a, you know, impregnates his wife, she's going to give birth to a two-liter. That was like the big joke. And, uh, and that didn't happen because I never married. Uh, it's, 
And uh, but the fact is, do it. Yeah, I would just drink too much Coca Cola. But then later on, and I always thought that like drinking water was dumb. I'm like, it's flavorless. There's nothing, you know, whatever. But as with all things, as you get older and appreciate, now it's like, oh, I love me some water. Uh, I don't, I don't drink, I don't like sugar anymore as much. I like candy, but um, yeah, it's just water is now. It's it's you know, it's great, and I love to waste it. So yeah. Yeah, brave in this area. Well, no, yeah, you know, I'm just saying because I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to help end the earth. So there you go. Well, not the earth, but the people on it. So, in my own way. Power to you. Yeah. Uh, and then we wrap it up with the idea of intimacy. <laughs> I think we've been living it uh, this last hour. I'm not yeah. saying, uh, not saying there's anything wrong. Intimacy. That's one of those things that. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't want to say like I get too comfortable. I guess sometimes with people, not to say like I, you know. You know, this, you know, one of those adulting things, too much information. That's one of those mm. adulting things. And whenever somebody says too much information, that's when I say my favorite words, fuck off. Um, just because I'm like, it, you know, I want too much information because I want the goods on how to sell you down the river when the time is right. Mm. And please fork over all the information. Get as intimate as you want with me. A lot of times people... Uh, you know, I've had I've had people say a lot of lot of you know I'm in twelve step recovery. I mean it's obvious I'm a drug addict, but it's not obvious I'm ten years sober. And the fact is, is in that process, I have a lot of people talk to me about a lot of vulnerable things. I've heard a lot of shit that yeah, you could easily judge somebody over. And what's great about it is I learn about them. I learn how to how to deal with those people, and then I talk shit about them behind their back the way you're supposed to. That's a joke, you know. It's probably, but point being, um, no, it's intimacy is not. It's it's weird how it's, it's as comfortable as with what I think is intimacy. Oddly enough, I'm not. I haven't had like long relationships or good relationships. I've always had like relationships with uh, people that are. I mean, I don't want. I'm not judging them, but I'm attracted to people that cause me trouble, and uh, so yeah, it's it's you know, I don't know what the intimacy implications are with that, but you know what. Judge me freely. Uh, yeah. Think, think what you want. Uh, so. Wishing you some good trouble. Oh, I don't know if I need. No, I'm, I'm 47. I'm happy. I'm okay. happy alone. Uh, not like in a bad way. It's like, yeah. it's a lot of, man. It's expensive and it's just uh, a lot of emotional wherewithal. And you know what? It's, it's life is good alone. That's a good note to end that's, on. That's, that's for Melissa too. Give yeah. It up for All me right. Thank Dave. you. Uh, and that was the show called Warm Takes. Back next month with, I assume, some number of the regular hosts, Corey and Emma, and all new comics. Thank you all so much. Have a great night. Please get home safe. There is another show after this. LOLGBT Percents Say Yas. It's a great talk show, fun time. Stick around for that if you can, or watch it on streaming, as well as all the other shows. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah, well, Cameron beat me to all that information. What you need to know is, uh, uh, they'll be here, I assume? Um, <laughs> so far, that's not the case. But, I assume they will be. I'll set up the stage just like they will. Uh, so yes, Say Yes will begin in, let's call it 10 minutes, or whenever three or four of them are here. So thanks for hanging out. Check out stabcomedytheater.com for our full calendar events. If you're done with us for the evening, but if you're sticking around, say yes. We'll begin shortly.
I'm having trouble trying to sleep. I'm counting sheep but running out. As time ticks by, and still I try. No rest for cross tops in my mind. On my own, here we go. Feel like they're gonna bleed Dried up and bulging out my skull My mouth is dry My face is numb Messed up and spun out in my room All my own, here we go Set on overdrive The clock is laughing in my face A crooked spine My sense is dull Past the point of delirium All my own Feel like they're gonna bleed. Dried up and bulging out my skull. My mouth is dry and my face is numb. Messed up and spun out in my room. All my own. Here we go. Oh 
Dev Comedy Theater, it's time for LL, LL, see, I told you, LLGBT Plus presents Say Yes, please welcome uh, two-thirds of the panel for tonight's Say Yes. Am I on? Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Okay, I don't know. I was, I, sometimes I think I can like, hear like, a little bit of a back, like a feedback almost, I think. Okay, there it goes. I hear it. So hi, welcome to Say Yes. We're waiting for Suzette. So right now it's ass. <laughs> it's ass. No, it's no, it's it's am. say ya. It, it's yeah, say ya. Actually, it's it's just KM. KM. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> we just heard the door open. I'm not sure if that was Suzette. Was that Suzette? Ah, oh, darn. No. False alarm. So we're just waiting because Suzette's on her way. So we're starting because we don't want to start too too late because we're trying to be better on time. But um, I'm Katana Ray. I'm out of drag because I come straight from work. And you talk striving less. I'm Manny Petty. I'm in drag because I have a little bit of time after getting off of work. <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> I should just start requesting like the last Friday, like or the first Friday of the month opening shifts, just so I can be off in time to be in drag because it's a lot more entertaining. Uh, yeah. Weird. The door's I, opening. There's a lot of jingling. I don't know if it's her. Does it sound the like judges have reached a verdict. Does it like sound I'm a like Claire's jewelry? Yay, she <gasps> made it. There she is, the gorgeous diva herself. It's goth Suzette. It's okay. We've said like Straight five from words the hot honestly. Topic sale. Um, uh, that we were in and out of drag. We literally just started like two seconds ago. You made it just in time. Cool. Hi. Hi, Suzette. This is Suzette Vanetti, everybody. Hi. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> 
Um, I was wondering. I was like, are they going to leave the open the middle seat open, or is someone? Well, we were going to start like just an open spot, yeah. and then as soon as the lights came on, she said she sat down. So I was like, okay. Yeah. So yeah, it was. I, I felt it's too weird. Yeah. It was, well, it was giving twenty twenty with social distancing. Yeah. So I was like, I can't go back there. <laughs> rings outside. You can have your middle seat back though. Um, you know, I don't. Know. I mean, it's up to you. I don't, I don't know if my neck is prepared to go both ways. It it I, is I, a lot of work. I was like, this is nice. Yeah, <laughs> right. You see why I yeah. sit in we'll a little chair? Would and you I like just, to switch? We'll try. Ooh. I mean, I don't mind. I mean, I'm here. You know. Okay. I want to try the middle seat out for we'll once. Try it. Try it out. Try, try it out. out. Okay, so um, we're gonna talk. What did you, did you guys intro the show at all? We just said, "Hi, I'm this person. This is this person." And oh, okay, that's it. okay. Also, we're waiting for Suzette, and then we heard the door open, and then there you were. Hi, Jesse. Sorry. Um, okay, so um, all right, so we're talking drag nepo babies is the topic today, and that has been, I don't I don't know what our viewership is like. Like we could have people watching from Australia or New York or Lodi. I don't know, you know, <laughs> faraway places. Exotic, faraway. All yeah. very exotic <laughs> creatures and, live in these places. And I just don't know <laughs> if, like, our drama is is if they're, like, up to speed on it. But um, lately, in, on our scene, we've had something come up, at least on X, um, drag Nepo babies. Yeah, well, Instagram. Most. And Instagram. Well, Do you want to? Well, there's just been something in the air in the air, the wind in changed. The air. I don't know. The wind changed. Mary Poppins flew away. Yeah. Everyone is all like, "It's a Twitter war." I was yeah. Mercury was, rising is in retrograde. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I was you know I was yeah um I was lieutenant in a Twitter war this past two days. Oh my god! And she had time, and so did I. I woke up in the middle of the night and was going through Twitter, and I said, "Oh, I have time for this." It's so. Okay, so, so what was your Twitter war? So I had post. Okay, so I I was I participated in Max Drag this past Tuesday, which is a, a drag competition show that Manny's a part of, and she's still in. Hello. Um, and uh, every week it's like all stars. It's like Drag Race All Stars rules. So, long story short, there's a winner, and they had to go against a secret lip sync person. And if they win, they get to choose who goes home. If they lose, the assassin gets to choose the group of vote to go who goes home. So I was lucky enough to be asked to be the, the secret assassin, and I've been waiting because like I, they asked me like three months ago to do it, and I'm like, yes, I'll do it. Um, and then the first two lip sync assassins won so far. There's only been three. I was the third one. So everyone's like, oh, the first two have been you know two for two, like whatever. And I'm like, okay. To be fair, to be fair, I'll give you. To be fair, the the assassin won the week before because none of none of us oh, was, the, knew the song. The, the other song. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did y'all know the Lord one? Oh, I don't listen to Lord. See me neither. I mean, no. I mean, I do, but like, I'm like, damn, we couldn't got like. Green no, I was, or... I was praying that I, I was like, as much as I want to win, I'll be okay if I don't because <laughs> I'm gonna stand up there like, <laughs> I don't know the words. I couldn't listen to the song. Well, anyway, it was a, it was a fun lip sync. I did lose, but it was really fun because um, I was planning on doing it very like just by the book seriously, but then with Diana Hole, like, right? Spoiler alert: Diana won that challenge, so I was against her and. It's very hard to do a serious lip sync duet or battle against Diana without some kind of craziness. So if you have the opportunity to just watch the stream, which we have not watched yet, um, we're going to watch that together at some point. But I can't wait to watch it back because it was just a blur of this crotch and floor and <laughs> blonde hair. It was it was really fun, though. So I lost, and I didn't really feel like it was by a landslide or anything, but... I mean, the audience was living That's for not Diana. a Lord song. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so she got to choose who goes home and whatever, whatever. So I made like this funny post like hours later because I couldn't post that I was in Sacramento because I was trying to be like stealthy and stuff. So that was the day that we were at Ace of Spades. So we, I was in town the whole day. But I didn't want to, I can't tweet about it. I couldn't even be like, I'm so excited for this event and blah, 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 blah. So I was just sitting in the dressing room for like three hours. So I took like one video myself and I forgot I posted it. So I posted on Twitter that evening and I was like, um, uh, I was talking, oh, and there was some drama after Max Drag that I was talking about on Twitter. Um, and I was like, anyway. I got pulled into that yeah. drama. <laughs> and then I was like, anyway, so I made her story was a first lip sync assassin to lose a lip sync battle against whatever. And then um, I was just like, haha. And then people liked it. And I guess I got like three retweets, but I got like 24 likes. So I was like, okay. And then out of nowhere, I was actually on my alt, funny enough, and I was scrolling through because I follow myself because I'm an narcissist. <laughs> and then um, you know how like you can like see like the original post and then the response after it if you're not like fully full. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure like algorithm for Twitter, but like I saw me and I just scrolled through and then I saw a comment from Shady V that <gasps> we're not gonna blur out the name. I don't care. Like I I don't care. Like. It's public knowledge now at this point. Like this is the longest story <laughs> about <laughs> about about a Twitter beef. It's that's just the beginning because like well because like the context matters because like 
the read the read or the insult she gave to me was based around Max Drag. And she was saying like um out of nowhere, unprovoked, she just responded to my tweet about myself on my own feed. It's saying, like she reactivated her account and that was the first person she saw. It was it. weird. So someone she likes or follows must have liked it, so she saw it. And then she just tweeted to me, same same makeup, same outfit. And you still pray for my downfall. You have no talent. You're an awful performer. You've lost to a hairy clown. Um, you're a joke. And I was like, what the... It was, again, like a midnight or something. So I was like, what the fuck? So I screenshot it, and I posted it, and then I just started this whole, like, back and forth with her. And she's she's insane, by the way. So fuck her. Well, I mean, it's not even really worth giving her name airtime. Because in the grand scheme of things, um, she attacks people. She's known for it. Right. Well, that's what I'm like. I don't like. I don't. I don't feel like a type of way about saying people's names, uh, because like she went out of her way to insult me and then started to act like she was a victim of something. And I'm like, and we were discussing this in the car ride home or here. And I just don't like when people kind of like have a neutral stance on things. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to get involved. And it's like people's neutral stances on things are when they don't choose to acknowledge something or like confront or take people accountable like for their things is that people will think that's okay to do and they think that they're right. And I just don't think, for me, I don't expect anyone to defend me or anything, but I'm like, for me, she attacked me, I want to attack back. Because right. she came to me, she said my name, she did all this. So I'm like, otherwise I'd be like, mm, whatever. But I was like, okay, this is my one chance. I want to just go in on her because she came for me and that's it. But that's what I had to deal with for like mm, an hour and a half while I was playing for, uh, Jet by Daylight. and So it was like, I had plenty of time and I was like, I don't really, I don't really care. Like, it's just yeah. out, of, out of blue. But, yeah, like these things, and then people were talking about like I don't know where. Um, I only know about because our friend, our mutual friend, posted a screenshot that she was sent by someone else about like people talking about drag nepo babies. Ugh. Like, wait, so Becca's here. Becca, there she is, the drag so nepo sh- baby. Sh- Shady B was talking about drag nepo babies too. She give no, her a chance. No, she was just on Twitter. Being give delusional. her a chance. She give her a chance. She'll sh- when she learns the word, she'll use it. It's just, it's just so, it's, it's so bizarre. Just the outright level of delusion going on right now with stuff like that, and I, I think that there's, I don't know. Like I said, that there, there has to be something in the water because suddenly this, water. this group of people just went delusional and they took it to Twitter. I think it ties in though to the whole like nepo concept, and that's the reason why I wanted to air my own dirty laundry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is because like it's um it's people are getting very bold on the social media platforms right now. So, oh well, I mean that's always yeah, but it's like it's weird. I just but it post is my it is more on now. Social media. Yeah, that's bold for me. But I think also because I it was funny when when we chose the topic and we chose to promote it, and we've only promoted this like what like two days ago, three days ago, and people were already like eyeball emoji to our flyer and like oh my god, and I was like, do they think I, they really don't know? any of our stanzas up on it. Well, I'm sure they know like Paul yours or whatever. Like, I don't know if they think we're going to talk shit about Nepo babies or we're going to praise them. So it's very like anyone will, we'll see. You'll find out. So I think first, just in case anyone's watching and they don't know what a Nepo baby is, we should define that. Um, a Nepo baby is somebody who is a child of somebody who's successful. And um, the, the, the concept is that that child gets everything because of their parent because of their family, because of the lineage, right? Um, I think Manny is a good example of someone that is not a drag nepo baby at all. Like, even though your drag mom is Bijou Bentley and she's good and established on this scene, she doesn't give you anything in terms of, like... Speaking of nepo babies. <laughs> she doesn't, she doesn't give you anything in terms of, like, gigs or bookings. She's a drag mom. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's and you one could have thing. easily fallen upon that. You could have been uh, no. I could easy. have easily. I easily could have just like laid my head on that cloud and floated away. But she wasn't gonna let me when when I first hit the scene. She she told me she was like, okay, um, I'm not gonna book you. She was like, you. She said you can go out and if you can get one booking by yourself, I will book you for show. She said, but until you can go out there and get yourself booked, I'm not going to book you. And she didn't. She really fucking didn't. She did not book me for anything, not even a tip spot. Um, but it, I mean, it, it, you know, it made me work and, and I went out there and I got FTLP and, you know, then, then she started letting me do things, but it was like, she was not going to let me just take what she had. She was like, no, you're going to, I'm going to teach you how to work for it. This is like after. Yeah, well, did you, this is after you won dress code and all that stuff before, right? Like, it was like all around the same time. I think it was like a matter of a couple of weeks because, like, when I hit the ground, I hit the ground running, and it was like, 
I started going out more because she was like, you need to go out. You need to be, you know, go introduce yourself, which is, you know, kind of how I met her because that's already what I was doing because I've been professional for a long time. So I know that you got to network. Yes, we know um, you have an IMDb page. Yes, I know. I have to plug you this. Put, so you one need to put success. Bijou's daughter on your IMDb page. It's, listen, they they voted me most likely to be famous. I have to uphold it. <laughs> That's the only thing I can do. So you're not a drag napo baby. No, I I don't believe I am. I believe that I have I have benefited from many perks of Bijou Bentley, but she definitely made me sweat and work for them. Which is good. Usually, that's how. That's usually how. Like a a. a I don't want to say a harsh parent or a, I don't know. I want to say good parent. Some parents um, are harder on their kids than like, like the dad that coaches at a league, right. Is going to be harder on his kid than the other kids on the team. Cause he expects more. So sometimes it can go the opposite and it, I don't know what the opposite of Nepo, what's the opposite of open. Nepo. Oh, um, open baby. Yeah, open, open baby. baby. <laughs> open baby. Cause it's backwards. Yeah. I'm just going to go. So it can be a drag open baby. Um, and, and that's, that's, I've seen that too, mm-hmm. you know, and I think maybe that's more how you feel on that side of the spectrum. Um, so that's what a Nepo baby is, and you're not a drag Nepo baby. So um, there was a tweet, uh, an X. Do you call it an X? What do you call it? Twitter? It, it, yeah. I would say just, we just say it Twitter. It was still a tweet from X. Yeah. Okay. There was an X going to give it to you um, from Twitter, and um, or a tweet from X going to give it to you. And. Um, <laughs> And it said Drag Nepo Babies, and it was about. I think we should just say it, right? It was about the show tonight at Badlands. Well, someone, well, someone on, um, you know, on Instagram where there's like the Instagram message, you can have like an Instagram story, like mm-hmm. note, and somebody, um, because we I say somebody because we don't know if like these people are affiliated or linked. It just happened like in the same time frame, like within back to back time. So it's like. One person just put drag Nepo babies, like sick throwing up emoji. And then this anonymous, not Joy Desperate, but like the other sad, desperate, the anonymous shit talker on face, uh, okay. Twitter. So That's for anyone that doesn't know, there's there's two accounts. There's Joy Desperate, <clears throat> who isn't really mean. They don't, they don't, ex- I don't think they exist anymore. They don't exist anymore. <laughs> okay, they're gone now. Okay. And then there was Sad they're Desperate, deleted. who was much more mean. Yeah. Um, and not nice. So they probably weren't the same person. Well, and there was a counterpart, Misery Peaceful. Yeah, but she had put like um, in response to Rosalia because a lot of people who like were, it, there's so many theories of who it was like people thought it was like Stella Man or Rosalia just because of the references that Joyce was making was so niche and like long ago that were like oh it's someone that we know that's why I never had an issue with Joy Desperate because I'm like it's someone that we know like that because she makes these references that I laugh at right and I I sat down with Detective Liz for a while <laughs> the other day um, which is a whole new show that I want to do she is where Nancy we, Drew we yeah break down uh, mysteries with yarn on a bulletin board oh because yeah because if Detective Liz figured it out then it's it's been figured out like so, and I'm not gonna say who who Detective Liz said it was um, I'll let her say that for herself if she ever wants to but I'm like. Okay, sold. Like cuff them, get that get <laughs> that them, collar detect. Yeah, See, like because and, and so Lizzo. Um, so but everyone, go, everyone make them eat bananas, Lizzo. Oh my god, um, not three snorts at one time. Uh, she um, so people were like kind of when this there was a big like uproar when like when Sad Desper came on and she was talking shit. So people were like, oh, Joy Desper was like, this isn't what I wanted. Like I didn't mean to have like this bad like this bad beef. I was just trying to have fun or whatever. So people were saying, like, just for the record, I am not Joy Desperate because I don't talk shit anonymously or whatever. So Rosalia had actually posted, like, um, just so you know, like, this isn't me because I don't hide behind a profile because I don't want to just say what I need to say, which I, I believe. And so Sad Desperate quote tweeted that and was like, I admire this, but I'm going to say what I'm going to say. The nepotism in the drag scene right now is weird. It's, it's wild as fuck. And okay. Elena's and <laughs> Helen's drag daughters are getting bookings at Fridays at Baddies. When they said us- names? They said names. Oh my yeah. God! Why? Okay. See, now, why don't you people send me screenshots of this shit? Kamaya, Kamaya, no, Kamaya sent it to us. Okay. All Kamaya right. is also a so detective. I think I. Okay. First of all, we have to repeat what they say because they're not mic'd. So they did. I audience. apparently I was sent this. Um. What did you guys say? They did. They did. Screenshot. One it? of our friends sent us a screenshot of like these two things happening very close to each other. And that's probably that's probably counts and. That's why I'm like, I don't believe it's the same person, but I believe they're friends. Oh, you know what? I just, I saw who tweeted it. I read the first sentence and I didn't keep going. That's my (laughs) (laughs) I'm so sorry. That's my fault. That's my fault. I'm so sorry. Sorry to the people at home. Okay. So, um, I think, here's what I think about this. 
I think it's a Friday night at Badlands. And the only person that really needs to speak about who's in the cast, and I'm not throwing anyone under the bus because I also have a Friday night at Badlands, and I have to answer through iBook, and sometimes we still make fun of me for some things that we won't say yeah. on air. But um, I think Helen is the only person that really needs to speak on behalf of who's in the cast because no drag performer in their right mind would turn down a Friday at Badlands. Mm-hmm. Like um, Rosie wouldn't. Uh, sad, desperate wouldn't. Um, you wouldn't. We wouldn't. Like nobody. No, would. it's 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 crazy. It's kind of like all these people who are complaining. Like you're an epo baby. Okay, well, would you say no to the gig? Right. Well, that's the thing. No one's gonna say no to it. And drag families can look out for each other. And <clears throat> I I don't actually want to opine either way on the cast that was at Badlands tonight and if it should have been put together because I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is is. Dra- is there drag baby nepotism going on in Sacramento? And like, I know that that's part of it, right? That would be Exhibit A. But outside of that, where, right? Like, because I don't see any of that happening. Drag families do shows together all the time. Yeah, it's like it's like it's a uh, like same shit, different day. Where it's like there are there are obviously like there are privileges when it comes to being in a drag family or a drag daughter or whatever. But again, like you can be privileged and also struggle and you can have you can still hustle like like I can't speak for I don't really know like Helen's drag daughter like that. But I know that she's been around for a long time supporting all the shows, supporting Helen, supporting me. And and I, I do think that supporting she, a show she, she isn't enough. But also it's booked. like but also it's like you don't know Ava because Ava's been working her ass off the last year. Absolutely. And she's been trying to. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Anonymous. No, I'm just like, I'm like, no one can hear it on the stream. Yeah. Um, Um, But uh, you do have a a higher pitch voice, so that helps. That helps cut through the the feed. There's a little... Yeah. Right, and you have a that higher. So that pitch takes laugh. away the validity of that statement a little bit for me, where I'm like, mm, I mean, maybe yes. I mean, because it's like at the end of the day, it's like there's drag connections with everybody, and like people will always say like, um, oh, this is rigged. That I'm like, I also like, well, we picked the right topic. If 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 it was talking oh about my like, gosh, the studio audience, and I always tell like people like, you know, to be fair, Helen always wants she books me first before anyone else, but I'm always working, so she has, she and, has to go for the she has to go for the next best. Well, thing. I want to tell her what I just said because Helen Heels just walked in. She's sitting. Here. Did you hear her? Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I said I don't want to opine either way on how the cat like whether or not the cast should have been the cast. That's not for me to say. The only person that should answer to who was in the cast is you. Just like the only person that should have to answer to who's in my cast is me. And the only people that we have to answer to is Taryn, right? <laughs> And but th- I mean, otherwise, we're trusted to put together a good show, and that's the goal. And if you're looking out for your drag family, that's what drag families do. And I don't. I, I'm. It's funny because in one breath I'm saying I don't want to. I don't want to answer to this on whether this was drag competition or not. But outside of this, if that's Exhibit A, where's Exhibit B for Sacramento drag nepotism? Because that's drag families do shows together. There are brunches that are just drag families just doing their show. Over, I mean, technically that's and technically I make a lot that's of mine. <laughs> so I, you know, I mean, I think I think is nepot- and then you have to actually ask: Is nepotism bad? Is it bad for a parent to look out for their kid? Because they can be be hard, they can be hard on their kid, right? But they can still push their kid to do better, you know. And so, what does that look like? Is that an open baby. We said open baby is the opposite of nepo because it's backwards. What's the, what's the opposite it of a nepo sound baby? good? I know, but what's the what's the opposite term for a nepo baby? <laughs> no, just a, a a kid who's just pushed, you pushed. know, push yeah, push down the stairs. Um, bop, 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 bop. um, no, I don't know. I don't know what the opposite term is. <laughs> no, these are all negative. <clears throat> <clears throat> are you the orphan no, girl? No, a kid that is. A kid that's no, – these are all really negative terms. <laughs> it's not a negative – but it's not negative for to be the opposite. And it, I don't think it, – it is negative to say Nepo, but I don't think it's negative for a parent to look out for their kid. Does Nepo always infer that they are, like, benefiting from being said? It's the privilege of being Ter- – like, uh, Helen says it's the like, privilege. Yeah, like, um, like Jamie Lee Curtis is a Nepo baby, but I have no idea what the fuck her parents are. Well, I mean, and then, they're, then they're like, well, maybe in your generation you might know. Well, and <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> also, I have no, I, I have no. The crowd just laughed because Helen have, said, "Listen, you bastard." I have, yeah. I don't have any like you know qualifications because I am not a mother or a daughter. So, well, and look, but you are a father. I, I, who? Missy, I just my mother. Yes, I claim her as my mother. I am a drag In daughter. Florida. I, I am a drag daughter, but no one knows who my drag mom is except you, and Mari Pope. I think you might know, right? And I mean, like Taryn and Apple know, but like no one else knows my drag mom. She might as well not exist to anyone else. You are not the drag mother. Right. <laughs> but I think I think I have been given a lot of opportunity in my drag career. But the thing is about being given opportunity is you have to consistently earn it. You can't like if you don't if you're not if you're not putting in the effort and the work and you're not earning it consistently, then it's not you know what I mean? Is that making sense? Talks? Tox is the talks is like the the narrow head, like you're like the outsider looking in. Like I'm like, is, it, is anyone paying attention to what we're saying? Um, I'm not. I, I think. <laughs> no, good. <laughs> I think you can be given things, but then you still have to earn them. So like like Ava was given an opportunity. I wasn't at the show. I'm assuming you did amazing. Okay, and Becca is a is a connoisseur of Sacramento drag. So we're just going to say yes. Padded chairs, by the way. Say yes. Um, ding, ding, ding. You're welcome. So I think that if someone's given something repeatedly, routinely, and they're not, they're not up to par, that's a problem. Yeah. I was saying this to someone earlier because we were discussing it. Um, is that like, yeah, like a Friday night spot at a bad like, – like, at, at a bad land, like at Badlands, um, like for example, like our like our current like good gig is like a Friday night at Badlands. Mm -hmm. So like yeah, like it is a good gig, and like if this person is being booked every single week, then yes, because then that is an issue. Or like they get booked once, and everyone can see like oh maybe maybe I, should you have to. I think that was I think that was something that kind of um, made the water hotter. Mm -hmm. I think is that what Ava? Since you're here, I'm just gonna ask you. When was the Friday you did before this one? What month was it? Uh, I did one a couple weeks ago with Karen. Okay. Like okay. Okay. So, so then three months in a row, which that's not. She just said she did. Let 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 women speak for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Her, her manager said, said I didn't get paid Women's for that. History Month is over. I didn't, I didn't get and my piece you, of the check. And if you were in drag, I would say you're a woman too at the moment. So no, I think, I think, I think that's part of the issue. Is part of the issue is three months in a row, and that's what people see. And I think like, um, when was the last time you did a Friday? Before that, this is your first Friday. Okay, well that counts. January. Okay, so January and April. So I think that's what people are seeing. And then I think the fact that you're both drag daughters and the fact that you're both there at the same time, I think that's kind of what made everything boil over, right? Like if you were just in the show or if you were just in the show or if it had been a year since, which I'm not saying it should be a year for anyone to be in a Friday, some, some people that happens, some people it doesn't. Um, I think that's kind of all the issues that came together and made it boil over. Please. Yes. Helen Heels has a question. Um, <laughs> this is for the interesting one in the middle. Hi. Um, when was the first time you were booked for a Friday? Like after you started coming out in Dragon Sack? How long did you wait until you were booked on a Friday? And who booked you? I uh, it was a minute before I was performing because I think I got a Sunday first. I think I did I did um, I did FTOP and then they needed a stand in for Sunday and I was the only girl in the town who was available because I didn't have any bookings at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Taryn didn't Taryn didn't know me at the time. Um, and, and the lovely Helen Heels vouched for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I think, yeah, I think I did the Sunday and this is to sound stupid. Was I your first Friday? Um, Maybe because Biji was the co-host. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I have to go through the photos. Nepotism. Yeah, but, but that's um, what I mean. But she earned. I mean, she. It's not well, like she yeah, had done. She was in the right place. It's the, the right same time. with Ava. Well, and that's like, what I told them trajectory. at the beginning of the episode when I first like hit the scene. Um, Biju, she wouldn't book me until I got my own gig for myself. She just wouldn't let me do anything. She was like, "I'll book you when you can get a gig for yourself." Same thing with me. And I'll, I'll never have a drag daughter, but if I did, I would say. 
like for I, from the jump, I'd say I I I can't book you. I can't book you until you've been booked in this show, this show, this show by this person, this person, this person. Because otherwise, people are gonna say, "Oh, that's that's just because Suzette's daughter gets that." That's one reason I don't want a daughter, and I want wanted a son at one point. I would love to see what your drag daughter would look like, to be honest. Um, you know what? Sometimes drag daughters don't look anything like their drag parent. Like I, no, I I think I think of Nitrix. Oh, you two look identical. I, <laughs> I think of Nitrix Oxide and Benita Rose. Like those those drag styles couldn't be any like Well, I wasn't gonna say that, but you know I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I think another thing that is that's important and I think I've said it on the show a million times, but like I didn't do a Friday until I was like five years in. So I think I've only done like two Fridays or three. Like I've done very few I've done Thursdays. I'm up, like I can up look up ass. how many times because I've done you know, no, because I because I work retail and I'm not off on a Friday, so it's just, right. I don't do Fridays. I'll do Sundays and I'll do. Oh, I actually wanted to ask you if you would do mine this month. It's kind of short notice. A little bit. It's yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Like I and I did the the last Friday. I think I did. If it wasn't like this past year, it was like Halloween as a drag king, like a year and a half ago, and there's like no one there. Well, we'll talk. We'll talk. So then my question is like, is it even always a good? Is it always a guaranteed good gig on a Friday night at Badlands? No. Like I've had good gigs on a Thursday and a Sunday there. So it's like, yeah, I get it. But it's like, I mean, I think that's just like their go-to. Like, this is a good gig. I mean, brunch makes more sense for a good gig because brunch is very lucrative. Well, Friday used to be the top tier. Like, it used to be the top of the drag mountain. And I think in a lot of ways, it still is because it's still the top night show. It's brunch can be hit or miss. It's it's lucrative, but it might not be always the most fun show. No matter who's brunch, I've I had plenty of makeup and mimosas where Helen Heels and I have sat there and looked at people in their own fucking world, not paying attention to us at all. And it's like, why did you wake up early and make reservations for subpar food, which we will not have at our new brunch? Yeah. Speaking um, of speaking of makeup and mimosas on Ace of Spades on Sunday, yes, the I was 7th. there today sound checking. That's why I didn't dress up. That's why you know, I'm my off normal on Sunday? clothes. <laughs> Put me on the other business Joker. woman attire. Right. No, I can't. Yeah. Um, no, I just wake up like this. I'm spooky. Um, so I, I think um, I think that's everyone's trajectory is different. And if somebody's out there and they don't feel like they're getting booked enough for Fridays, then they could ask you, Helen Heels, or they could ask me, or they could ask Taryn. You know. But starting what? What this is the way me and Suzette interact. Damn, yeah. Isaiah, you chose violence today. The, um, the thing about it is that like, I don't get a string of people asking me to do Friday shows. Like, I don't get enough people that reach out and be like, I want to do. Friday shows, how do I get to your Friday show? I don't get a bunch of people. People know that I run Friday shows, but they don't reach out to me. And so sometimes when I'm like, because I had a completely different cast for this night, and then one, unfortunately, is not able to. But And then you were like, let me be nep nep nepotic. Nepotimus. Nepotic. nepotic. <laughs> but, but I was like, you know what? I need a quick cast that are going to put on a good show that are gonna be available and say yes to the dress. And they all did within minutes. And then, except for her. Um, but wow. yeah, that's just, well, she's she's still learning and stuff like that. I like but, your shirt. I like your shirt too. Um, no, it's got toxins. a cat on it. Um, but, oh, it is your shirt. Okay, so anyways, but nobody is hitting me up like crazy to get booked in a Friday show. And I'm not the type of person where I'm like, I've been here long enough where people know if you want to get in the show, hit me up. Ask. I have never turned down anybody that I didn't believe belonged on it. But because they don't, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go with what I know. Yeah. Right? Because they said yes in minutes, and they put on a great show tonight. Literally, we got compliments tonight after the show. It's because that's the way it goes. Me and Susan actually were talking about this the other day, and I was like filling her in on the whole like in, like in social media drama about it. <laughs> it's about how like, because me and Suzette are producing a show together well, it's, it's an event that are that involves per, like having people perform in it, but like when it comes down to like if you go out of your way to do the work and to produce and do these shows, uh, I think it's completely up to whoever is doing the booking, whatever to have whatever say in the show they want. It's your it's like, prerogative. Yeah, it's like I'm not gonna because there are a lot of people. It's very common to be like, 
oh, this show's happening. I should be in it because I just deserve to be. Like, I'm entitled to being booked because yeah. it's this. Like, and I was telling her, I was like, maybe, like, if you're not being booked for certain things you fit, you think you fit into, maybe you're just not good at drag. Well, I mean. like, for me, I was saying, And like, not everyone is, and that's okay. Yeah, like, I was saying, it's, like. It's, 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 it's an entitlement thing, and it's almost a birthright thing. Like, so I think it's safe to talk about my comedy show, right? Like, so I, I do Queens and Comedy at Punchline, and I would like to have, I usually have three comics. I like to have two queer comics. And one straight comic, and that's generally what I have, except sometimes people think all three comics are queer, and sometimes the straight comic thinks they're the only straight comic I've ever worked with, and I'm like, okay. Um, but a lot of comics will think that they should be on the show because they are a queer comic. And it's like, ah, are you, are you good enough to be on the show? That's a, that's a requisite for being on the show. It's not just an open call. It's not an open mic. It's not – it's it's it's. and I'm not disparaging anybody, and I'm not saying anybody that hasn't been on my show is not a good comic. Like, that's not what I'm saying. Um, and I also don't want you and me and, uh, and Apple and Taryn to start getting messages left and right saying, can I do a Friday? Can I? Because there is a structure to what we do, right? Like, you start on a Monday. You go to a Thursday or a Sunday. Then you go to a Thursday or Friday, and then, like, from there – Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You're not saying come to me and I'll give you a Friday. You're saying what do I need to do to get there? Because I think I and we've talked about this and I'll say it on air is like and you'll agree with this or else. <laughs> not enough comedians and drag performers were theater kids because because sometimes when you're in a theater production in high school, you're tree number 4. Not everybody is the And stuff. you better be the most fucking sickening you, tree number four I've ever seen. You better sway with the fucking wind. Take me to the orchard. Yes. You you better be Pocahontas' Grandma Willow. Yes, I want Grandmother like, Willow. Give me that The Rainforest Cafe Willow, yeah. Boots. There are no small roles. That woman ate that role up. But, there, but that's the thing. There are small roles. There are small roles. And sometimes your small role is starting on a Monday. And is that the most glamorous? No. <laughs> and like... I never complained about not being in a Friday. I just waited and I waited and I waited and I waited. And finally I got lucky and I generally trip over my feet and fall forward. But, um, you know, that's that's how it is for some people. But I also was asking – sorry, I don't mean to keep just no, fine. I also was asking, like, what can I do to get better? What? Or I was paying attention to what people said I was doing poorly more so than that. Like I wasn't really asking the questions more so as listening to people say, well, she sucks at that and this is bad and that's terrible and we hate that and we hate this. But I think also people, I think a lot of people don't realize how valuable it is to be, to have communication skills and to be professional and be reliable. And, so, and like for me, like even though I do have a lot of friends, I have besties that book me everywhere apparently. Um, like I think they book me because I'm reliable and like I won't say yes unless I know I can definitely do something. And if there's a theme, I'm going to commit and spend money and do it. I'm not just going to show up and be like, I'm a witch. Here's a broom. <laughs> like, you know, like, I'm not going <laughs> to, like, you know, like, I, I, so I'm like, if they book me, I'm going to give them what they expect of me. But then right. again, we've, we've had many discussions where I'm like, we'll have a show, like, because, like, there's so much opportunity. And even though it's such a saturated market, like, <laughs> Like, if you don't see a space for yourself, you can make a show and you can make things work if you work hard enough to make the networks and make the networks, make the connections and network and make it happen. So it's like people will, like, see someone like Suzette go out of her way. If she doesn't get booked somewhere, she'll make her own show. She'll produce her own show. Which is that's And then get exactly mad that they don't happens. get booked in it. Like, oh, why don't you book me? Like, well, we're not friends. Or get mad that it's my show. That, like, it's like, that's my favorite one. People so are like, like if, why do you get to run that show? Because yeah. I started it. Like, if I don't know someone who's I like, fucking if did I, it and you didn't. If I don't know someone who's the showrunner, producer, or the booker, I'm like, I'm not going to ex expect to be booked because I'm like, well, they don't know me, so why would I expect them? Or if I don't get along with them, I'm like, obviously, they're not going to book me if they don't like me. I'm not, I'm not going to book them. I'm not sh booking Shady B anytime soon. So it's like... Oh, so, that's good. We have her. Well, we talked about her month. already. Y'all were late. Well, so. I'll go ahead and say we're not booking her. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but I, I also... <laughs> why didn't you take that seriously? <laughs> I also want to make sure that I, I want to say that if you... Because I don't want to, I don't want to pick a side, and it feels like it's too much on one side. So I want to say the tweet that originally said "drag nepo babies." Like, okay, if that's really something you feel, then message someone about it. You know, or if you want to say what you need to say, don't do it behind. Go join a profile. family. Well, I mean, 
you don't have to though, right? You don't have to. Well, if you're getting so upset, not but not on everybody Twitter. can. Not everybody can. Not every drag family wants somebody. There's somebody at Bear Dive who will take you. <laughs> <laughs> I did a lot of Bear Dive gigs. I can say that. Okay, I was mistreated sometimes with some of the patrons. Um, I think I think that that can happen, and and I think there is, I think there is some drag nepotism happening in the world for sure and in northern california for sure but i think one example again i think the only person that really needs answer is helen but because, does she even does but, she even need to answer though that's the question no like, yeah no. so it's like yeah she did she did a statement online but um no i agree with you it's like it's like if you want to say but again like it comes out for me like if you want to be this like whistleblower person like oh i need to say what i need to say like then say it don't do it behind some sim character oh well, my think- god that's what that was i for the longest i for the longest time was trying to figure out where they got that image i think uh, the first we didn't you're have not, you're not a fan of juno birch the, i didn't play sims i never played the sims. first one wasn't the first one was like a person you know no joy desperate is a no no no, no i'm saying the first the first x the first the one that no, yeah. the Instagram is a person. Oh. Well, no, I'm yeah. saying I've seen I've seen where it was a person not hiding behind a person that you could message or talk to in, in real life. I think the people that have the 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 burner accounts, um, it was fun, but it's become not fun, you know. And and at some point, it's it's just anonymous shit talking. And I don't know. I I'm proud that we can answer to what we do, you know. I'm I'm proud that like we answer to what we do and we do it publicly because we're not flawless. Sometimes yeah. we fuck up. Yeah. And and it's 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 a big person to own that. Yeah. Well, it takes a long time to be like you make a lot of mistakes and you learn from them to be like you do have to be very conscious of the decisions you make so that when you make them you can be like no I made them based on this and that's why I speak on like right and I, and I'll either make them again or I've learned from my lesson yeah. and I won't. And at the end of the day, it's like even if I didn't know Helen or whatever, I'm very I'm obviously I'm biased because Helen's my best friend, but you know, but like like I will say like. It's it's like there are, you know, advantages to being friends with certain drag queens and being friendly with other drag queens. Like you don't necessarily need drag family to have like the, the benefits of it. I think like the most you get out of it is like you get to share wigs and outfits. Oh yeah. Bijou and I walk through each other's <laughs> closets like No, hair. I think I th- <laughs> No, I mean I no. think the the best benefit of having a drag family, at least for me, is like I actually have a family, you know? That's actually my aunt. I, I'm not saying who it is, and I'm not looking because Helen? I know you don't like it. No, mm-hmm. I didn't say that. Um, but that's a person that cares about me. Empty you know? chair. Empty chair is my aunt. Um, and and people that will look out for you or deal with you or put up with you or talk to you or make sure you're okay or just help you when you need a help. You know, and, and yeah, drag friends will do that too. But not ever – like, look, <laughs> you put up with me way more than you have to. So – um, I know because <laughs> it's absolutely true because, because you do love me, you know, you like, like a very obnoxious niece you do. Um, and, and that's family. And I think that's the biggest benefit of a drag family. I think it can be wigs and clothes and stuff, but I think it can also be an actual family. Um, I don't know. I, I, and I think here, I've talked a lot. You say something. <clears throat> Hello. <laughs> no, um, I, I, I definitely think, like, th- yeah, there is more than just, like, being drag family. Because, like, you know, I, Bijou and I are, you know, drag family. But I also consider, like, all the Eves, like, my family. You you know, those are the sisters. That, you know, we have been able to rely on each other. And, you know, we have, you know, how many times has, have I been like, oh, sister, can you give me a zip? Oh, sister, can you give me a pin? Oh, do you need this? Here you go. Like, no, yeah, you can take it. Have it the whole night. Um. And I just think that, yeah, there are there are benefits to building community. I think that um, if you're feeling a little sad and left out about it, you you might need to start reaching out and branching out because, you know, I hit the scene and. <laughs> oh, I'm somebody I'm, was just saying that Katana knows all the tea because she was the center of the ex drama yeah she and was. so and she was they were like she, she can tell you about it and i was like she sure can <laughs> <laughs> but but i just you know because when i first hit the scene i didn't really have a drag family here i was kind of a, a loner back home and i ran by myself and um 
I went out. I introduced myself. I made a name for myself. I did FTLP. I did bear dive gigs. I did tip spots for, I think, the first two, three months that I was on the scene. And it wasn't until, like, you know, starting to go out to Eves and more people saw me starting to go out and, you know, showing face at Badlands. Then in June, after I'd started doing drag, I think, like, maybe February, I in June, I got my first Sunday. And um, it's... It had been all those months of work leading up to finally getting what I wanted, which was to be asked to perform at Badlands, you know? Um, I just think that you got to work. It's kind of funny because it's like, I don't, I mean, I love Badlands. I like, I'm very lucky to be booked there quite often, but like, I don't always think my best drag is performed there because it's very much, it's a nightclub with like drunk people and like, I have to do like pussycat dolls and stuff like that. And I'm like, that's not like really like my, my true like stuff that I would do. And I feel like a lot of times like performers have to dumb down their stuff to be appealing to the crowd. Because I remember like I did one Imogene Heap number there and they're like, this is what Sacramento needs. And I'm like, it's here. It's all around you. You just don't have the attention span to watch right. it happen. I just was just being like bitchy, like, can you turn the lights off? <laughs> <laughs> and then they did. So I was really lucky. But again, like. Um, so it's like, I do think that there's a lot of talented people. Like, it's not like, oh, like all these haters are out here hating on Nepo. It's just like, there's a lot more like potential in people. And there's a lot of talented people in Sacramento. It is a very saturated market, but there are a lot of very talented people that I just don't think that they should worry about. Like, oh, I'm ne- I need to get booked to this nightclub to do drag. Because if your goal is to get booked at Badlands to do drag, it's like, I don't know. Cause I'm like a hippie and I'm like, like, I don't do drag for money. It's nice. I forget. So I you're a do, hippie. I'm like, because I, I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to be like, oh, wait, I did drag before. It was cool. And I, oh, it's like, I thought you were saying all hippies do drag for no money. And yeah. I'm like, <clears throat> I've been I misunderstanding what a hippie is this whole time. <laughs> but it's like, I don't know. It's like, I don't know. Like, I, I understand it's a very lucrative and like a good opportunity to perform at a nightclub like Badlands. But again, I'm like, I, I think it's because again, we come from Stockton and we have one gay club that's barely even gay anymore. And I'm like, y'all like, like, I don't know how to be like. Like y'all have so much opportunity here. Like, don't look at like this small thing. Look at the grand scheme. Like, you have you have like the capital of California to work with, and you're worried about one nightclub. The tunnel vision gets in the way. That's what it is. Well, let's let's try to be, let's try to spin it towards positivity. Like, okay, so I'm if positive somebody, that you. <laughs> if somebody, and I'm at peace with that. <laughs> if somebody does feel like um, they're being excluded, then there are a couple of routes you can go. You can do what I did and just start making your own shows and booking people and hope that you're seen and that you get better. Um, and, or you can, like, that's the thing. When Batty Omen did a Monday, when Unique did a Monday, when when, when Mud did a, I think Mud, Mud did a Sunday first. Um, but when, when, right? Thank you. Because I was like, Mondays <laughs> were on pause. So if I'm, was that? Yeah. So, like, it was very apparent watching those performers. Like, oh, okay, they're they're ready for more than this. Um, I remember the first time I saw a million need on a Monday. I like to see someone twice because, like, you never know who's been practicing that one routine for like eight years, and then they do it, and everyone's like, oh. And then it's like, okay, but what what else can you do? Don't ask me that. Um, but <laughs> um, so like. I don't know. I think if if you feel disenfranchised, that's not invalid. You're not wrong, but there are ways to fix that without just talking shit. Mm-hmm. And and Sounds venting fun. venting is okay, <laughs> but like also, what are you doing to get to where you want to be? Or what are you doing? Because sometimes where you want to be is parallel to where you think you want to be, right? Like. That was me. Like, I was like, well, I want to be there, but I don't know how to get there, so I'm just going to go there. And, again, I got lucky. Um, but I don't know. I think that's that's the thing is, like, so what would you suggest? If someone's like, Manny Petty, I want to be booked on a Friday, and you've never met them, right? And mm-hmm. and you don't even know what their drag is. What would you say? Hi, love. I'm sorry I don't book on Fridays, but thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> no, um... I would say, I, I mean, it, de- it depends who's asking because it's like, you know, if it's just somebody who's, you know, passing through and they're just trying to reach out to anybody in the scene and get a booking, well, it's like, well, Diva, you need to reach out to, s- to some other people. If it's somebody who's in the scene who's trying to, like, really work, 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 it's like, just, 
honestly put yourself out there. I mean, post shit on social media, go to a gig or two. I mean, it just really, show up and be like, I we notice out. when you're in and out of drag, handing us a dollar or just standing there being pretty, you know, yeah. it's, we notice, you know, and it's, if you do the work, I'm, I don't give a fuck what anybody has to say. I'm going to book you. I've seen the work. I don't, I really don't care what anybody has to say about how I book. I just, it, it, I'm booking. <laughs> but see, that's a thing. That's a step, right? Like, yeah. I don't know where in that ladder velvet room would be, but that is a way to be seen. And, yeah. the, and it like, that's another thing. Maybe I'm not like at enough Mondays or Sunday nights, but I see posters Mm-hmm. And I see Velvet Room posters. And sometimes I show up at Velvet Room because I had a comic or a drag performer drop out of me on my show. And then I have to rush over there and make sure I can get somebody. But <laughs> True. It's a quick show. It, very. Um, but that's like – that's if you're on shows, then that's going to multiply, you know? Yeah. And like maybe you don't get a Friday your first, you know, 50 shows out. That's okay. It doesn't mean you're bad. Well, and listen, I, I've said it on here before, and I'm going to say it again. It's the reality of the entertainment industry in itself. You're not, you know. It, one of the biggest rules of thumb that I learned in acting was you don't get 85% of what you audition for. and you Who the should, fuck said that? I don't know. Somebody who doesn't get booked. Um, <laughs> 85%. That's a amazing hit she rate. She said I was going to break yeah. your legs and stuff. Um, no, but... But it's it's like you need to just be okay with rejection. And sometimes where you want to be isn't where you are. And that's okay. People, I'm so sick of people like, j- sometimes you're not there and that's okay. It doesn't mean you're less than. It doesn't mean you're less of a performer. It doesn't mean you're a terrible person. It doesn't mean you're ugly. It doesn't mean your fashion is bad. Sometimes you just have more growing to do. End of sentence. <laughs> <laughs> So, Katana, what would you say if somebody was like, hey, I I would really like to be in a Friday at Badlands. How do I do that? <laughs> I'd be like, Shady B, leave me alone. No, I'd be like... <laughs> no, no, I'd be like... Um, I, I don't need to caption that for the no. audience. I think that, I think that came through the mics. I'm petty. No, like... Um, no, I'm no, petty. Oh. <laughs> if you're petty... You should have said. No. You should have said buzz buzz off. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> no, no, I'd be like, I, if I was telling someone, and this is like whenever Helen takes someone under her wing, I, I was like, just like show up. It's like it's hard because it's like, oh, show up and waste your money and don't perform and just show up. But like but back back when we started, like I would just show up at a club and just be in drag and then just be noticed because mm-hmm. you know my makeup was good and you know like <laughs> so people would be like, why aren't you in the show? I'm like, oh, I'm here just to support. Like I would love to be in it sometime, but. And I would go and meet the performers. Like I remember, I was like terrified of Monique more because I was like, she's so intimidating and she's so seasoned. But I met Jamila. I had Jamila introduce me to her, and we talked, we networked, and and I was like, okay, like, blah blah blah. I mean, I had my own show, so it's kind of easy to network that way. But like, you just have to just be a decent person and just like go up and talk to them and be like, hey, like I'm interested. Like here's and now that we have Instagram and we have all these things, we have Becca here, like, you have no excuse to not make a, like a, a catalog of your own performances and be like, this is what I do. Even if you're doing it in like, like I don't know, like your bathroom or, or something, like, if you can show something unique from your point of view that people have not seen yet here, then like... Is it unique? <laughs> 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 She's going to be on Tuesday. Oh, did you see the group chat? Oh, yeah, I yeah, did. Yeah, going to be on Tuesday. Yeah. I'm so sad that I'm going to oh, miss it. Oh, well, that's a good thing because you're going to be in Max Drag. So I, I think So I would just tell them like show up, do what right. like, yeah, show up, do a tip spot, like do what you can because then if like if you show up and people notice you and you're like, Oh, why don't you do this? And like then people are like, Oh, I should probably book because the only reason why I got okay, like I will say like this might be kind of contradictory, but like if you have some kind of like thing that people know about you and like you might use that to your advantage, now like ten years ago people knew me from YouTube and I was just like, Oh, I'm I'm not that great. I'm just me, I'm not all that and because people thought I was something. People thought I thought I was something because of YouTube, and I'm like, oh no, I'm not. I'm just, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say no to the opportunity because I don't want people to think I'm big headed. If you have something going for you, just say yes to everything. <laughs> Take advantage of whatever. Well, I mean, you no. can, you can say no. Like you can say no. You can, but I'm because like, if like if anyone had said no tonight, then it might not have been a thing, you know. But again, who's gonna say no to a Friday? Me. Well, Cause yes, because yes. I had to work. No, it's like if you can, just like, um, like just use whatever you can to get like get ahead. It's like because again, it's such a super like super 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 saturated market. 
to stand out, like it's really hard. So like if you get any opportunity, just take it. And because more likely you'll be in the right place at the right time, you know the right person, you're like, you followed someone at the right time on Instagram or, you know, like, so like post yourself, post your looks on Instagram. Even if you just paint at home, like just paint as fiercely as you can. Do some photo shoots that look like, that go on a flyer and be like, oh, we can use that on the flyer already. You're already you're set. I, I always am weirded out at people's first met, and I don't want to hear what yours was on air. You can tell me off air. I'm fine with that. But like people's Just say first it on Twitter. memory of me, um, like I remember what, what the first time I realized Taryn knew who I was, like way back, like 2017, 2018. Um, and, way back. Right, right. That is, that is like six, seven years ago now. Um, but it's, it's like, I didn't know, I like, I didn't know Taryn was watching a Monday night, you know? And then a lot of people are like, oh, I remember when you used to hand out flyers on the corner. And I didn't think anyone was looking at that. I'm just trying to get people to come to a show that I'm doing. So, but I also was booking people that people were looking at and then they were sharing the flyer. They were probably, who the fuck is that about me? So... You know, people, we notice. That's my point. Is like we notice. We notice who's in your show. We notice who's in the crowd. What? No, I'm gonna quote something really stupid. No, do it. Do it. No, I was gonna say women notice. <laughs> no, like, um, but even that that still applies today because you can have a, a viral video on Twitter and it can go around like that girl who hit her head on the floor in the cement floor at Badlands. I was like, I'll book her at ease if she wants to okay. because I drug her through the mud on accident. So I'm like. She she made a round. I'm like, no, unique. Well, unique is always welcome. If we're talking viral, instant that like, more people saw that basement drag fifty dollar drag run. We were just talking about. <laughs> we're gonna fuck up the night. Like, everyone has seen that. Yeah. Like, well, she's so, in jail though, so, so she can't get booked anywhere. She's what? She's in jail right now. Oh. Yeah, we tried to. Book well, her. maybe. She- <laughs> On the contrary, ma'am, she's been booked. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wasn't that good? Oh, my God. I'm like, these people should come see me do actual jokes. Um, it's the most yeah, lively audience I've ever good. had. Um, That's why they come to the pod. Yeah. So, I like you're saying, like you can be seen whenever, by wh- whoever, wherever. So put yourself out there. I, I mean, we know. I mean, like, yeah. I remember. I've heard, like, you, if you're just in the same room, like, you'll see something, and you never know. Like, I mean, I still my favorite drag name to this day is still Kamina Big Butt. <laughs> like, that's still my favorite drag name ever, just because. And like, I, I was like in the back of the room, and I was like, her name was Kamina Big Butt, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I was like, and I remembered it. So I'm like, things like that. Like, you know, you don't have to be all like, put me in her show. Like, I'll do all whatever. But I'm like, you, just put yourself Would out you there. Would you book Kamina Big Butt? Just so I can say her name. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know, Helen, would you book her? Because no one asked me for you. (laughs) No, they don't. No, they do sometimes. Um, But then, uh, I don't know, maybe. She's been around for a while. She asked, I mean, it's like, if you want to drive to Stockton and do a tip spot. Yeah. But that's part of it, right? Yeah, I do it every week. What's the furthest you've ever driven for a gig? The furthest I've driven for a gig? Mm Mm-hmm. San Francisco. Okay, Manny, what's the furthest you've driven for a gig? The furthest I've driven for a gig? Oh, well, Helen and I went to Modesto. No, you went to Reno. I mean, um, that's like two hours. Furthest um, away? Uh, not Modesto, uh, Fresno, sorry. Oh. Um, <laughs> Helen says even further. Oh, Merced is Pat. Yeah, I, I, oh, I, li- I went to LA. I'm so geographically challenged. Okay, I, this isn't a lie. I drove 850 miles for a gig once. For oh, a I wait, didn't drive. I, was, the I took a bus and a train. I was booked, and then I moved, and I drove back for the gig, and it didn't pay the gas. Like it's an adventure, though. It, I mean, it was a booking, and at that time, I was not getting booked. I think the show was actually with Helen in Vacaville. Remember, I drove eight hundred and fifty miles for that show because I was booked. From where though? Like, and because where, I wanted the booking. Where did you start across the ocean? Like I was like, where, where, <laughs> like, were you in Hawaii? I can't do math. But like, where were you? Like, where were you driving from? Phoenix. Oh, uh, I, I stayed wow. for a while in Phoenix, um, but I drove all the way from Phoenix because I wasn't getting booked because I had done some Mondays. I did a Sunday that I was not ready for, and I will admit that. <laughs> um, She's like in the ocean, just like. <laughs> and then I was just, I was just, I was sitting in the ocean on a on a pontoon. <laughs> a banana. Yeah, a banana, a banana She's boat. She's like, shit, I'm booked. 
I'm not buoyant. <laughs> Um, I, I sink, but uh, no, I drove because like, if you want the booking, take the booking and if it's far and like real, I think we got paid $75 for that. So it almost paid for my gas. Um, with the tips, I probably made all 800 miles. I probably, well, at, at the time it was a hundred miles one way or a hundred dollars one way. I'm sorry. A hundred dollars for gas. That's cool I though. Said, Hold That's on. I <laughs> I messed up. I conflated this miles and dollars. The, the if if Suzette's driving 50 miles an hour for 12 hours, what time will she hit the ocean? Yeah. <laughs> but And I'm not saying everyone has to drive 800 miles for a gig, but I am saying at that time, I was not getting booked ever, and I got booked, and I was like, I am not going to let that booking go by. Like, I will make sure I'm there, and I paid for and I'm not, and not everyone is I had the money to pay for a hotel not everyone can do that but find a friend to stay with like if that happens to you but just if you take the booking take the booking because you don't know what it can lead to is yeah. what I'm saying yeah 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 and that's why it, you're going to be hard pressed to find somebody that's going to turn down a booking which is crazy to me cuz like I said would you turn that down no you would take the booking why are you mad that somebody else took the booking sorry you didn't get asked take that up with god Somebody well, else but, said yes. But you don't you know? have to take it up with God. You can you can actually ask people, how do I get there? Take it up with your local drag queen. <laughs> Are you saying your local drag queen is God? Yes. Mother is God. Well, have you met Liz? Child. Like, yes. I, I, um, like, it's funny. I don't remember, like, when. Do you remember when it went from, like, you asking to do gigs to when it trans, tran, like, transitioned to, like, you're being asked to do them? Like, you were, like, being booked without you having to ask anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I mean, it. I mean, it. It. it, 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 it you know, it, it was levels there. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like going through the. the it thing. was like like takes on a movie. Like, can you give us three different line readings? <laughs> We're yeah. doing voice yeah. animation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like Doug Trio yeah. saying yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's me. At Br- next up, Helen Heels. Next up, Helen Heels. <laughs> next up, Helen Heels. Like. Helen Hill. Not me. I say the same thing every single time. Yeah. Yeah. Or B, she's like, make some noise. <laughs> Batlands, how are we doing? <laughs> um, Transitioning from getting gigs to. Was it post Bentley that you feel like you started getting asked for gigs? There um, is a streaming audience. No, in here. I, I feel, feel like I. Well, I mean, yeah, it was post Bentley because Bijou and I had been talking for a while, and then you know when I started to get gigs for myself, that's when she was like, "Okay, well, do you want to be part of my drag family?" I was like, "Oh yes." Uh, it was my two year Bentley anniversary last month. Um, Happy Bentley anniversary! Thank you. But um, Bentley birthday, yeah. But um, no, I. It, it was honestly around. Pride Month, I think, when everything started changing for me, because during Pride Month, I mean, that's that's like our Super Bowl. We are booked, 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 booked. And most places will really honestly ask anyone who's available. And I wasn't one of the girls who was going to be doing um, Pride. I wasn't one of the girls who was going to be doing any kickoffs at Badlands. So I had a lot of availability and opportunity. And I just I just started saying yes, because they needed a girl who was there. And for a long time, the beginning of my drag career here, I was the stand in girl. If somebody called out and you contacted me nine out of 10 times, I was free. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with being the stand in girl, because guess what? Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, I made money. And that, you know, that's how I started doing Sundays. Well, it's like and there's nothing I, 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 I truly don't mind being the stand in girl. And I didn't for a very long time. And then one day I woke up and I wasn't the new girl. I wasn't the stand in girl. I had used all that opportunity to make a name for myself, build myself a reputation, save some money so that I could start making what was going on in here actually going on out here. But and that's part of the theater thing that I'm talking about is sometimes you are tree number four and the lead like get sick. And they're like, hey, tree number four, come be the lead. Yeah. And you're like, let me take off this bark, you know, yeah. or whatever your Can costume is. Can I keep is. the leaves, though? <laughs> yeah, I'm keeping the foliage. Um, so being a standing girl is a way to get there. Like, yeah. it's, it's an avenue there. Yeah. It's instead of driving 850 miles from the middle of the ocean, be a standing girl. <laughs> I love my lack of geography. It's just like only that's the only place you. Can yeah, eight hundred. You're like, where's New York? Six hundred miles away. I don't know. <laughs> well, because there's like, if yeah, there's another if you're, ocean. Yeah, if you're driving, on, have you, have you in been on Grinder like and Snippies? They're like, oh, I'm three miles away. Like, but you're across town. Like, 
<laughs> next I'm time, 12 you know, miles away. Am I away. alone on this? Do you know what I'm talking about? Next that's time I get somebody Hill. hitting me up on, on my dating app or on Facebook, I'm going to say I'm 850 miles away. Are you, when are you going to be here? Start the music. My intro's long. <laughs> oh, my God. If I had 850, I would paint all of my nails that's a Helen right show. away. Helen he also had a nightmare once. She was late for a gig, and she was like, what, like 45 minutes away or something? She was like, to start the music, my intro is long. <laughs> That's like, now, now, whenever I'm like running late, I'm like, to start the intro, it's long enough. Oh, my God. So oh, I was funny. making fun of myself, because usually when you start the uh, intro is when I start getting ready. Like, making sure my dress is on and stuff. So... Being late. Once a month, I have that. That's gig. my nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I get a weekend off, that's what I, that's what I'm dreaming about. <laughs> Literally, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm next. I don't have any makeup on. What the fuck? And it's like my fault. I'm like, I can't yeah. believe I did that. I had a dream the eves. We were doing like an out of town gig, and I had n- I didn't bring any of my drag. Didn't bring any. Of my- it was like when you know one of those days when we do like those pop up gigs, and it's all, it's okay. How many of you guys are available at Tuesday at like three fifty seven? This Friday. <laughs> you know, like I had I, I had reoccurring nightmares of me like getting on Drag Race, and oh, I forgot all my luggage for some reason. I don't know how that happened. I, <laughs> but you know what always happens with the nightmares? You always when they say that Helen's there. You're freaking out, but you're always like, or maybe I'm just throwing always this amount of makeup, and I just put on just outfits, and I'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> You still make it work in your head. <laughs> You're like, I could still perform. Yeah, I had a dream. I was like right after. Um, did you watch Dragula at all? Mm-hmm. I was right after. Um, what the fuck's her name? What's the one that like went home first and then did came back? Did you watch Dragula at all? I, it was a very. I didn't watch the last episode because I. Uh, JK, like, I had a dream. I was right after them for some reason. I was performing right after them. And then they're now with these big inflatable boobs. And then, like, I was helping them carry them. And they just rubbed them all over my face, wiped all my makeup off. <laughs> and I was next. So I was like, I gotta put my makeup back on. And, like, <laughs> and I was so panicked. I was. It was so serious in the moment, though. I was, like, so freaking out. I'm like, I'm never gonna get booked with a Dragula girl again. Yeah, that's. that's that's the drag queen trauma they don't talk about. It's like, do you ever have like theater like trauma dreams? Like, I forgot the lines to this. I whole... forgot the lines. I'm not in costume. I don't know the musical and number that's playing. And it's like a, a show from like ten years ago. That but you... yeah. Oh yeah. my I god! Have... Midsummer Night's Dream haunts me. <laughs> I have recurring dreams of me not knowing the choreography to dancing when I was a, when I was a dancer, mm-hmm. and then I'll wake up like I haven't danced in like 15 years. Yeah. Like, why, why would I? And I try to pretend like I know the choreo as I'm on stage. I'm like, yeah, I got this. I was like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Or like I'll forget like my combination of my locker in high school, and I'm like, why do I not remember this? It's, oh, because I'm old as fuck. <laughs> not I, as old. Yeah. As Tell me your trauma. Hmm? Do you have any trauma dreams? No, I don't remember my dreams. You're That's how right traumatic I, they I are. I make all my I make all my dreams come true. I don't know what like. Have you seen Inception? Yes. I was just checking. <laughs> um. Yeah. Or spin in a some spin a top or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sacramento, the there's, it's Sacramento. There's only bottoms. Um, so, <laughs> thank you. Um, is there anything else we want to say about drag nepo babies? Like, I think I think it's not bad to say like like oh that that looks like nepotism. Like, but I think it's it's perfectly it's perfectly okay to have an observation and to have your opinion on it. But, but I again, think it's, do it from do it from an account. That where just, you're identified. I think we can all agree, like we can respect someone saying, like, I just feel like this is a little bit unfair based on my, on based on my opinion, my observations, or blah blah blah. Then we're like, okay, we can talk about that. But if you're gonna say it from some anonymous like thing, it's like, well, we can't go anywhere because you're hiding behind something else. Like, yeah, nobody wants to talk these days. Everybody just wants to fight, and half of you bitches don't have hands. Um, so I would suggest conversation well, going forward. Um, <laughs> You're, that's a street term, Katana. Oh, a I know. Term. I'm from Stockton. <laughs> it's Lodi. She's from Lodi. She's from Galt. No, if anything, I'm from like French Camp. That's where I grew up on that. French Camp. Did you, say, yeah. did you say identify from French Camp? I identify as a French Camp. <laughs> Wait. No, but I mean the 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 reality of the matter is it just seems like nobody wants to just talk. Looking French Camp right in the eye. I, I don't know. <laughs> No, yeah, if people are just bold on Twitter and stuff. And then, like, I am, too. Like, I'll talk shit on Twitter and stuff. But again, like, I'm saying it out. Like, I won't say anything shit-talking-wise or my opinion if I don't think it'll get back to the person I'm talking to. And then I can't, like, own up to it. Because I learned, when I was, like, younger, I used to talk shit and be like, oh, I, I didn't mean that. 
And then now I'm like, well, if I'm going to talk shit, like, if I feel strongly, I will speak on it. But then I'll be like, it, that's what I said based on these, like, factual things. Yeah. I like people saying things in real life. I don't know. I think, But some of the things, like, people, like, again, the, the drama I had, these people sometimes just aren't anywhere. They're just no, right. they're at you, home. You, you so responded. Like, so, you responded. Yeah. So I'm like, why do you get to come and be like, uh, you know, you, like, you're a joke. You have no talent. And I'm like, okay, well, if you were around, I would tell you to your face, but you're not. Right. Uh, a question from the question. audience member. No. Okay, so it's a lot to say back. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna res- I'm gonna repeat that really quick just for stream word for word. So yeah, ex- um, yeah. Here we go with that. Um, so, Hel- so Helen got a message after everyone responded, um, and it said that the person, the original person, a, a secondary person, felt bullied by all the responses. And I'll say I don't feel like you guys needed to respond. Like I was like, eh, like just do the show, you know? Like because it, it, I that's that's what made. That's what made it so big was everyone responding and seeing it like you're giving so much power to the original message by responding to it and sharing it. And then people. Well, I can't even say, yeah. This okay. And people always expect that the stalking road or the beef road, it's a fake and it's a beef road. They always expect us to take the high road and to not fight that, like to not stay with the man, to not blame the person. And, and you're like, like don't. Some and you're like we, and we some are people, from Stockton. and some people are like I'm just not going to get involved. It's like well, you know, it comes to it comes, it comes to a point where like if you're going to like you know say these things, like we're going to speak on it because people like to to like just say shit without thinking that they're going to get like held, account, count, held accountable. And one thing I didn't even ever totally forgot to think about was that like people and this is just an example. People like to pinpoint in this instance Elena and Helen when it comes to drag nepotism because their babies are getting opportunities in lucrative venues but when other people do it other places well and that's, that's which is fine because at the end I'm like that's their gig they can book whoever the fuck they want and that's the same thing and that's that nice that's right. the benefit of being a someone's drag daughter or drag child like you can get those opportunities and that's fine I'm not going to talk shit on it but if you're going to pinpoint like oh drag nepotism is wild as fuck in Sacramento and, I'm, and then just be like Helen and that Elena was a line read. Because they're the only two people that have drag children in the whole scene, right? No, I th- I think, and that's the thing. Like, what you're the hypocrisy is what you're saying. Yeah, because like that's what happened with me is we got attacked for having a brunch that had the same people, the same people, the same people. But there are literally shows that just have the same people, the same people, the same people. And it's like, well, why is no one saying anything about that? Like, why is that not a problem? Yeah, and again, like, I, it's like you can okay. If I had to, I mean, we booked. I mean, the books that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> The E's are you booked. are from French camp. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, no, like, I don't know why that was funny. <laughs> like people in French camp are just walking around. Bibbly, 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 bibbly. <laughs> it's just a town of people. <laughs> <laughs> they are the not looking for their there. pride. <laughs> Thank you. Like, like a lot of people. We. Like, You're welcome. We. Yeah, a lot of people like I guess are they feel that way about the E's because they think that we're a set cast and they can't be in part of our show. I was like, we've never said no to people unless like I just don't like their drag or blah blah blah. But it's like, um, like yeah, we booked the same people because a there's like no drag scene in Stockton, and in people we can rely on it and it became like oh like I want to be an Eve, I want to be a cast member, even though like if you were around enough, we like you can do a number with us if you want to. Like there's always like an honorable like an honorary Eve like for like a few months before they become an actual cast member because like they're already there doing the work. That's why we're like okay, we'll put you on the flyer because you're doing the work to commit to this thing. 
And but we have the right to be like, okay, they're an E because we said so. You know, it's like one of those things. But so it's like if it's your show, again, I will say like anyone can book at the end of the day, like if I complain about someone booking someone, I'm not going to make a difference. Like, I'm not going to, I mean, if you have a collective voice of people saying like, this is wrong because this is this terrible offense you're doing right now, then it could be changed. But if it's just like, I feel that's kind of unfair. Why are people doing that? Blah, blah, blah. Like it's their show. They can do whatever the fuck they want, but don't complain about one person when there's like a whole like community of people doing the same thing, just not as publicly or on the same day, you know? And it's like, that's fine. Like, it's just like make it make sense like make it consistent you know just make it even across the board like yes there are like things that can be talked about and things that can be discussed and changed to be better like i think the thing with like in the past with badlands and there's a whole thing that was discussed and it was based on like factual things you can see like yeah there weren't people booked on these flyers this month this month this month and you can speak on it but if it's just based on your own like hurt feelings yeah and don't use opportunities to jump on and dogpile because I was the victim too. I hate oh. them too. You know, that's such an off tangent <coughs> thing. But like when it comes to that, like just be like, again, I just want to clarify, like you can have an opinion and be honest in how you feel and you can do it. But just like, don't just like pinpoint certain people you don't like because you don't like them and just negate everyone else. I believe we had an audience question from the neighbor. <laughs> Yeah. The the fact of the matter is is like she has been working for for years, um, and she had gone through an extensive like a training period for even stepping out on stage and everything. But because people don't see or choose not to see all the work that goes up, that goes behind them, whether it's gay, whether it's Vita, whether 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 it be and any drag child, those people who choose not to see all the work that this person put behind it just assume Mm-hmm. Or they'll say that they say like, oh well, I've been working hard too, and it's like I don't see it. It's like how Connor was saying, it's like you know, we don't see it on the profile, we don't see the videos, we don't yeah. see anything popping up, we don't see much of the shows. But you got a lot to say about these people who are putting in time, who are doing their research mm-hmm. and everything like that, that they want to hide behind the word nepotism because they just feel so. It's easy. Yeah, it's easy. It's easy, and we're all icebergs, right? Like you only see ten percent of what we do. Yeah. Even even for a gig, you don't see the hours learning the lyrics for most of us, and the the time. It, and we're all in the ocean. I'm not talking about anyone's. I'm not talking about anyone specific, um, or like just makeup. Like how long it, does it take a drag performer to do their makeup? And you're seeing the finished product, and people think it takes ten minutes, and some people it takes three hours. You know, like some people it takes them a long time to do their makeup. So I, you know, we're we're icebergs, and you're only seeing the tip of it. So much is below the surface. So much is unseen. What Elena was just saying, since she wasn't mic'd, is that people give Ava shit because they don't see the work that she does. Um, I'm paraphrasing, but they don't see the work that she does. Um, and and that's but like, that's the thing though. Like Taryn booked you, right? Like Taryn's not your drag mom, right? Um, that's not nepotism. She is now. <laughs> 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 so you're adopted but that <laughs> but that's like <laughs> that's it's, go ahead kind of like circling back to like what we were, you were saying about um with eves and stuff like that yeah a lot of shit goes on there but half of you don't want to come out and that's the thing you don't see the work we do because none of you want to drive the 40 minutes to stockton and that's fine no one like you don't, don't have I don't to blame like you. that's okay like you know there are, i have my days and i love the show but it's like you aren't there. You don't see the work that a lot of these performers are doing coming out, but showing up. Also, you know? it's not really about what we think at the end of the day. Yeah. It's about what the crowd thinks. And a really good booker, a really good producer can say, well, I don't like – I'm just going to use myself. I don't, I don't like what Suzette does, but the crowd seems to respond to it. Mm-hmm. And that's worth something, and that's worth putting in a show. And at the end of the day, it was your responsibility to put a good show 
on the stage. And if people dropped out of, then of course, we, like we just had this conversation with Rose Rose while she was here. Like, of course you're going to book people that are reliable, that you can easily get a hold of, that you know are going to show up and show out in a good polished look with good makeup to a good song, because those are all the things that we need to run a good Friday. So like, I don't know. Because at the end of the day, if we put on crappy Fridays, there are no more Fridays. That's what you guys don't get. Like, they will take Fridays away from us. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean that's it's a business. Accurate. Like, it is a business. <clears throat> we're there to sell drinks and fill the bar. It's like so if people see a show and it's like, I don't know, dog food, they're gonna be like, what that's is that's Suzette. What is this? Um, that sounds no, crazy, right? <laughs> I, well, that, and that's, that's that's the funniest thing for me, and I don't know if you've ever gotten this, but a lot of people have asked me, like, why don't we start the shows at 1030? Because that's when all the people get there. And I'm like, because all the people are here. They don't need us to start. We're supposed to be here so they start the sh so people come earlier. We're supposed to get people here earlier than they're getting here, and they get here 1030 naturally, so they don't need us at 10. The club's full. Or like when someone's like, are you going to do, is there going to be a show on New Year's Eve? No. There's no room for it. The club is full. I don't want to go in the new year and drag. <laughs> That's why I'm going to do it like this, you know. I think it's also, I mean, it's also valid, I think, to book someone based on, like, if you have a good, like, professional relationship with somebody mm -hmm. that you can enjoy working with. Yeah. Um, like, if I don't book people, but if I did, it would be based, like, a lot on, like, oh, like, I enjoy working with this person. And, like, as a human being, I can interact and be in the same dressing room and I can be within close quarters at the Yes. Minute. I can be cool with them. Yes. Like, even if they're not everyone's favorite performer, I'm like... Do you just... want to spend the day with that person? Like, yeah. especially for brunch. Like, especially when we were doing brunch at Badlands and we're this little hundred square foot dressing room for like seven hours. Like, do you want to be that close to someone that despises you? No. Not really. And also, don't complain about shows that if the person you're who is running the show you hate, like, why would they book you? Like if someone if I was if I was interviewing for a job and I had beef with the with the, with the boss would they hire me probably like he, not your your Twitter is full of like fuck McDonald's I hate McDonald's yeah. McDonald's is trash yeah. and then you show up at an interview for McDonald's and yeah, they're like, like um well, it seems like you don't like us yeah like so yeah <laughs> me? I think those are Residents valid points are I think babies. I think this is a topic that's worth being out there and explored and like if you book the same show like in what is it april in june then it's like uh i don't know but again that's your decision so I, you know i think at that point if you have a problem with what's perceived nepotism then like talk about it in a productive way but hiding behind a fake account and lobbing insults at people isn't productive i think that's the takeaway helen wants to insult me now <laughs> She wants the mic. This is the insult. She wants you to hear her. This insult is the insult, Manny. Manny, segment. what the hell are you wearing? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say this. A lot of people also misinterpret business nepotism, which, if we're going off of this as, as a business, right? And that's what it is. Is these are performers. They get paid check. They get paychecks. They get W twos. All that crap. Nep business nepotism is where you hire your kid to run a department, and every day, that's their job. That's what they do, and they only got that based off of their family and not based on like their work ethic or their merit. I don't book people the same always back to back to back to back. It's been since January before I booked my daughter like in a Badlands show. And she's never it, done Eves. <clears throat> and she's never, yeah. <laughs> so she's not even in our show at home. But so I'd like. has she been there? Like I literally told her that I found a video of her. Shout out to Becca. I found a video of her tipping me and being there back in last January mm -hmm. before I even knew her name. Yeah. And she's been there every week tipping the girls, whether she liked the performance or not, whether it was in Spanish or not. She, <laughs> se habla español. Um, but she did. And she's, she, a lot of people, so whoever thinks that is that she also did a lot of the behind the scenes work too. The, the tip of the iceberg situation. She came to the studio twice she was there for hours she brought her boyfriend she brought snacks that's always a plus um and she, she stones her outfits and she shows me progress of wigs and outfits online and she has fierce nails and she has I amazing nails. nails i see the nails and taste and she knows her words and Where she knows now? how to work a crowd <laughs> like there were there is more behind it than just the fact that she became my drag daughter 
So like yeah, and a lot of you are still upset standing there in an Amazon bodysuit. Like <laughs> I, and don't get me wrong, I'm an Amazon Me. girl. Okay? <laughs> That's but where Helen was like, bye. Do something like <laughs> she layers, okay? N- you can't Fashion if you Nova can't tell it's Amazon, I don't care. But it's like if you're standing here in the same ratty old thing and you're complaining about what everybody else is doing, babe, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you are putting energy into the wrong problem. I think I think I think what you're like we don't need duplicates like of people and you're yeah. not a duplicate of your mom and you're not a duplicate of your mom and i'm not a duplicate of my mom i also don't give a fuck if you make your own outfits or make your own hair or anything like that just because you make your own dry doesn't mean it's good i'm actually <clears throat> i'm i'm actually super proud like table of contents queen is i can't remember who said it a drag race queen yes. called it a table of contents queen and when i post and i'm like yeah liz did my hair and this person made my out jen Sounds made my like outfit it. and like um this person made the floaster poster and like this happened uh, made me say floaster um like so it, it's like i'm proud of that like I, like i still have to go take the stage and, and i mean i, did, I deeply ad- admire craftsmanship if it's if the person is absolutely a nice person but absolutely again, like, i know because like this hair is by me 40 inches i made this outfit head to toe i'm like okay well you're still a cunt <laughs> like, <That's me>. <laughs> <laughs> no okay, you're so a you are a cunt not a cunt do, oh, you're do we right. have anything else to say about this topic any questions in the audience? And I mean, truly, if you're bothered about how much you're booked, go start your own show, please. Honestly, that is that is the truth because and when you see how go hard do a it show, is, do a brunch at Mendocino me Farms. Say it again. I was like, go do a brunch at Mendocino Farms. I was thinking about that hippie sandwich for like three days straight. It was so good. <laughs> it was so good. I would absolutely do a brunch at Mendocino Farms <laughs> on the big blue on the blue cow. Just I would absolutely. Ride it's like the, the Renaissance, but instead of the horse, it's the cow from Mendocino Farms. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up with my next photo shoot. Yeah. <laughs> people are very, very upset about my social media and stuff like that. But I have a show, and not one person has ever reached out to me personally. I don't. People just complain about everything. Elena said that no one's ever reached out and to me. And I'm her included in that. For, I complain about booking. stuff. Um, and people complain about it, but then they don't ask. And I think, I think that's the thing is if you're not going to ask, then you can't say no one's booking you. Um, I don't know. You want to be there. I'm sorry. I say I, it I, privately. I don't read your mind. Right? Because, like, I don't get booked. Um, but uh, I don't complain out loud about it, like, on the internet. Yeah. Well, even like. I'm also not asking people. Yeah. Well, the event, the like, the, the work, like, the event that me and Suzette are doing is at Easter Spades on May 10th, which is a bloodbath. Like, um, mm-hmm. well, it's us. Yeah, mm-hmm. but um, yes. it's a it's a group effort, and like it we're is. so lucky that like, the two of we us. have a producer, Jay Joy. Three of us. She is like so helpful, and it is a lot of work. And uh, even though it was just me, like standing outside of Stab, I was like, you know, I really want to do like a blood rave, like from that movie Blade. That's like I'd like to do that one day. And then Suzette was like, I can make it happen. And then she and Jay Joy and me have been working together to make it work. It's been taking months to have it. This was like last fall. I talked about it's it. It's an iceberg. It's a long term thing. And when it comes down to like, we book only five people, including us two. So we can only book like what three people like, I want to book who I want to book or we're going to book who we want to book. Right. And if someone's like, Hey, I'm not booked for this. Like, well, sorry, we did all the work to do it. I'm going to book. Right. You could have started your own show. Yeah. It's possible. like Manny said, anything's possible. Well, I anyone's guess. replaceable. Everyone is replaceable. Um, anything else on the topic? No. <laughs> um, I I don't even know if we should pick a topic for next time because this just came up and this was a worth literally thought, yeah that was like yeah. two days ago three days ago I'm like this is a, if this Tuesday brings out night. an audience we should just talk about yeah, this again yeah. y'all were um, ready we need some more like controversial topics. but like that's isn't isn't it, it, this is proof of the pudding like right like we're talking about something that happened because that's the show we have to put on a good mm-hmm, show mm-hmm. and we were like well that'll make people want to listen to it and watch it and, and a, we gave our topic. opinions where you can see our face mm. Yo, how did so how did it feel how did it feel sitting in the middle it felt nice door. yeah it felt nice the i mean i just i just know i'm gonna watch this back on youtube at home i mean i don't love my profile so i feel There's like gonna I be a lot of good a highlights job, of you like, in the middle eyeing up the camera but it was it was strange though being in the the center seat. We right? can I'm, swap next. Yeah, time if you yeah, want. yeah. Okay. No, I do enjoy being off to the side because then I get to that yes. literally you know, sit like yeah. the stripper I am. So, I but yeah, you see, I've been like contorting my body this whole time, and I'm like, no, you're in the center. I sit like I'm in drag, even though I'm not. Like I'm just I'm just because my my muscle memory is like 
And I'm like, I'm fully in a sweatshirt and jeans You're right like, now. I'm content. Yeah, because you can show the picture. Because I'm always in drag in the photo, but I'm like almost 80% of the time not in drag. Nah. Yeah. You're we'll here. Just crop the drag. Same on makeup, just same outfit. Put her head. Just We'll just put your head put in Rose drag. Put Rosie's makeup on my start, head. <laughs> what, we should just start putting you out of drag on the poster, and then you'll show up in drag. Like, surprise. Yeah. yeah. Um, just do your drag while we talk. Oh, Helen did that show. <laughs> oh, yeah. One day we'll just all get ready while we talk. Absolutely not. Just dust everywhere. <laughs> Um, okay, so we do this show every first Friday, so the next first Friday is June 2nd? May. May? <laughs> May 3rd? I don't fucking know months. It's May 3rd. May 3rd, yeah. Um, our next time doing this show will be May 3rd, um, and then we're doing Blood Bath um, on May 10th, uh, a week after, and then in June we're going to be doing prom. Yeah. So... Yeah. We got some fun things Come coming up. Thank you for watching. Thank you guys for coming in person. We really appreciate it. Um, I Anything else? Can we wrap it up? Always wrap it up. Okay, okay cool. Well, thank you. Thank you to Jesse, and thank you to Stab. Um, and uh, tune into more shows for Stab, and tune and into more to shows with thank you to the Napo Babies. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> All right, everybody, that is it for us for the evening. Thanks for coming out. Uh, everybody in person online, uh, check out stabcomedytheater.com for our full calendar of events. You'll uh, see what we've got going on. We're live in person Thursdays through Sundays, and we stream everything we do six nights a week. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Improv all night, starting at 7, 7, 8, and 9. Have a good night. Great.